SackTownSports.com and the Sacktown Sports app. You can also watch the show on YouTube at Sacktown Sports 1140. Here are the Drive Guys with Kevin Gleason and Kyle Drake. Oh, what a week last week for that uh, that Kings fan roller coaster. I don't know where it goes from here, but I know Kyle Draper. We got, what, 12 games to go. Here we go. We finally got some clarity, and tonight the Kings, I don't know if we're going up or down from here. Big week, and tonight, huge opportunity for the Kings against a Sixers team that should be at least a little bit worn out. A, a, a Sixers team that, you know, beat the Clippers yesterday, feeling good. Last game of a road trip, I believe, for Philadelphia. This is one, if you're the Kings, because you've lost 10 in a row to these guys. Mm. Even without Joel and B, uh. they have had your number. You are right, Whitey. This is the game, a statement kind of game, because we know our boys are going to be up for tomorrow night. Yeah. I know for a fact they'll be up for Friday night against Dallas, but this is sort of like Washington last week. You know, it's like you're looking ahead to Orlando, Washington. You got to get that one. Same thing tonight. You got to get it tonight. You're talking about trap, trap game. game, yeah, a trap game, Ooh. exactly. So, I, and I, I, I and I know we're shorthanded. You know, the injuries. It, it's a real thing for this Kings team. But you got to beat the Sixers tonight. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of feeling well, I just want to take a moment to thank you and uh, Jay for filling in Friday. I and Drapes give me a hard time about this today. I was at the station and then I, I went home sick. And he says, "Who does that?" No, I'm yeah. still giving you a hard time. Yeah, dude, you don't call in from I the was, parking lot. I, I felt like you, I was getting you got your hand on the door about to, my to open up. Drapes and Jay, I can't make it. No, I but, went but, in. Then, I did actually go in. Drapes, he was behind that's the mic. Terrible man, that's like, <laughs> dude. That's like hey, you were a game time decision, literally. Yes, showtime decision. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, I just. Uh, and how far of a drive do you have to get to the station? Oh, man, are you kidding me? It's like twelve minutes. Oh, all right, all right. I, I'm about to say if you drove like forty <laughs> minutes to get to the station and then called in, I'm like, what? What is that? But yeah, no, we held it down. I we, know. I'm we, sure we you did a great down. job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. That, that I, was a tough show for you to miss, though, because it was after the Wizards game. I know. And people I were know. fired up, man. Yeah. Like, oh, so man. where were things, and where are they now after the after the Magic game? I don't know, man. I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm. I, I don't want to say I'm fed up. I, I just. I'm going to just let the games play out, big fella. Yep. I'm not going to get too high or too low because we saw last week you lose to Washington, worst loss ever, but then you beat Orlando. Mm -hmm. and you go two and one on the road trip. If I told you we were going two and one on the road trip before that, you take that. Right. And so it doesn't matter who you win against or lose against. It matters that you end up on the right side of things. And we won't know that until later this week. Or at the end of the season. So let me ask you this. And I know you got the scoop on this. And I know you guys touched on this Friday. You know exactly what's going on here. What about the whole thing in Washington with Malik and Coach Brown at the end of the game? Huh? What's going I mean, that's on? News, what's man. going we done, on? We done, we done put the dirt on that one and, and dug the grave. And then that's, Malik that, goes over for 10 the next game. That, that's that's Great, last up? news, man. It's uh, it, it, it was not definitely not a good look. And we talked about this on Friday. Not a good look by Malik. But if Mike Brown isn't having a problem with it. Right. If his teammates aren't having a problem with it. And if they address it and work through it. Who am I mm -hmm. to cast my thoughts on what Malik should and shouldn't do or anything like that? Yeah. It was ugly. Yeah. It, but it showed his frustration. If I was, if I was sitting on that bench, I might have walked out too. To lose to that team mm -hmm. and in that way. Where really, outside of like two nice little runs you went on, Washington outclassed you. And so the frustration was there. I think you're right. They come out 0 for 10. But you, it shows you where Malik's head is at, though, because after the game, he tweeted. And we talked about this, uh, you know, um, on the post game show uh, on NBC Sports California Saturday. You know, how bad he was. I'll be better. You know, and so. It, it, it's it, it happens in an 82-game NBA schedule. And we need Malik. And so if you're Mike Brown, what you going to do? Bench Malik and be like, nope, Malik, you know, uh, you know uh, you're know, you only getting 10 minutes tonight or so. Although, did you see in that Orlando game, he took him out with about six, seven minutes to go mm -hmm. and didn't play him. You, mm -hmm. And we were saying, with me and Chelsea Gray, when's the last time the Kings played a close game and Malik Monk yeah. was on the bench late? Mm-hmm. Um, some are saying Keon Ellis's offense is really coming around now. 
Now you can say that. You're a little premature. No, I was not. A, 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 a little premature praise. I was, praise, I was not. <laughs> he was making shots. Dude, you can like see if, if he gets more five. shots. If he gets more shots, he's going to be scoring more. Uh, I'll say this. I believe now, despite the ups and the downs, which are well chronicled, yep. the Kings have won seven of ten, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, seven and three. They're last. So they're playing, I think, all things considered, their best basketball of the year. Yep. You can make that case. Yep. I think they are. How about we give Mike Brown some credit for that? How about that? What a novel concept, giving the coach some credit. Because I know you guys probably heard a lot on Friday about, oh, yeah. oh this coach Brown, oh, they got to get rid of Brown. They got to send Brown out of town. It's ridiculous. How about we give him some credit? It, ridiculous. And, you know, the Kings have been here almost 40 years, and they've had 40 wins in 10 seasons, I think it is. Two of them Mike under Mike Brown. Uh-huh. And how many years has Mike Brown been coached? Two. Exactly. Not even two yet. Not, not even, even two. Full two. Years. Exactly. And so, you know, you got people saying he's a good regular season coach or he's a good uh, a culture changer, but he's not. And I'm like, give this dude. He's a two-time coach of the year, first of all. He was unanimous last year. And I just think people, man, you know, are, are so reactionary. You got people with Twitter fingers sitting on their couch and they somehow know better than what's best for this team than Mike Brown, mm -hmm. who's with these guys every day? Here's the way I see it, Drapes. I think one of the reasons Kings fans have been so confused and looking for answers is because this team, I think top to bottom, stem to stern, this roster, probably not overall as good as we thought it was going to be at this point, my opinion. So I think Mike Brown deserves more credit. People say, oh, the team, they're this good. They're not winning more. Must be the coach's fault. I say, you know what? They're a good team. Maybe not as good as we thought they'd be. We'll see. But the fact that they're about where they were last year, and as you say all the time correctly, all their goals are still ahead of them yep. and attainable. How about the coach get some credit for that? And think about this too, Whitey. At the frustration from the fan base, frustration from the media, I imagine frustration within the locker room. Sure. But he's kept it together. Uh-huh. It, it, it really it has, has. It has never gone off the rails. They, 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 you know, it hasn't spun out. And I also maintain this. Look at the Western Conference and how much better it is this year. I could argue the Kings are actually having a better season, playing better this year than last year. Mm -hmm. And I know it feels like that. I know the standing says what it is. But you're in a tougher Western Conference this year than you were last year. And you're right about the same. I think a game behind where you were last year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so give Mike a lot of credit, man. And, and, and the thing I, I, I like about Mike, it seems to me, especially when it comes to the defense, and, and we should talk about that at some point, because they've been playing lights out defense as of late. He sort of adapted and molded his defense a little bit. The offense, not so much. Like, they still do. They're similar. But the last two weeks or so, I've seen more zone out of Mike Brown. I've seen him junk it up a little more, more, you know, switching it up early in the game. And so I, I think he's coaching his butt off, man. It's been a challenging season. I know the wins aren't where, you know, fans think it should be. But I think he's been coaching his butt off this year. You're right there with most of the teams yep. in the West. You got three teams right now that are – kind of head and shoulders above, right? You're in the mix yeah. with just about everybody else, and that's an accomplishment. Of course, we'll see where it goes from here. This could still go any which way. Could still end up a season that we never forget. Could still end up being a season where, for the most part, yep. you know, the majority of fans feel like, ah, it, it was a disappointing season. But to the point you just made about the defense, we know that Orlando, they don't, you know, despite what we saw last time they were here, they're not a great three-point yeah. shooting team. So the Kings played a lot of zone. That's just good coaching. Yeah. And with Keon Ellis at the point of attack on that zone now, you're getting more ball pressure. It was very effective. Give the players credit. Give the coach some credit. People act like he, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's, it's, it, it's frustrating because look at the carousel of coaches we've had come through. Exactly. Here. And we finally get somebody respected across the league that's actually doing a great job. And as soon as you lose against Washington, oh, he has to go. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous, Kings fans. We can't be like that. Like, I know, I you know. know. It, and if when we talked to uh, several people in Denver about this, um, Michael Malone, 
those early years for him, how uh, he struggled at times, how some people questioned whether he was the right guy, but they stuck with it. And we've changed so many coaches and so many front office people. Like if I'm Vivek, if I'm Monty, when I signed Mike Brown, I don't know the length of his deal. I, I, I don't know that, but it should have been at least a five-year deal. Like, I don't want a three-year deal because you need time to build a culture, to build a program, and I think that's what we're doing right now. You're right, and that's especially true when a guy gets off maybe to a slow start. You have to say, hold on, give him time. Well, he's, as you said, two years, and he's already been to the playoffs, and they're right. probably going back. And, and here's the thing. How could anybody be going, patient with that? Right. Is it going better than even we thought? I could say, yeah, like the turnaround has been – Overnight. Yep. And and so I feel like we're almost ahead of expectations right now mm -hmm. in terms of building the championship contender. Think about it. He came in the off season of uh two seasons ago with an inherited roster, remember Domas and, and, and Fox, and he sort of molded it and took Domas is being unleashed right now. This is the best basketball DeMontis Sabonis has ever played in his career. And I give a lot of credit, obviously, to Sabonis, but Mike Brown and his staff figuring out a way to maximize DeMontis Sabonis. It's been tremendous. De'Aaron Fox, too, is playing the best basketball of his career as well. I know. I know. And we know there's still going to be some ups and downs. Yep. And we're going to hear, you know, fans are going to fan. One thing we try to do on this show is, you know, give you a chance to, to express your opinion, whether we agree with it or not. But at some point, we just have to acknowledge this coach has done an excellent job uh, to this point. I want to ask you about Sabonis and, you know, it, it, are we seeing NBA history tonight? Ooh. Is this really NBA history or do we put an asterisk by it? We'll get around to that. But coming up next, Drapes takes yeah. from the Golden One Center to drive guys on Sackdown Sports. On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. Looking for the ultimate sports bar experience in Sacramento? Look no further. Fieldhouse American Sports Pub. Family owned and operated. Serving up mouth-watering food that'll keep you coming back for more. Voted as the number one sports bar in Sacramento. Your go-to spot for catching all the big games. Swing by their convenient location at 1310 Fulton Avenue. Or order online for pickup or delivery. Don't miss out on the action. Fieldhouse American Sports Pub, where every game is a winning experience. Kevin Lewis of National Garage Door. Whether you need to repair a broken spring, install a new opener, or buy a quality Rainer door, National Garage Door is here for you. Call us today to see how we can transform your house with a new garage door. 638-4554 National Garage Door. I just can't control my feet. Coming to the venue at Thunder Valley, March 30th, World One presents The Jacksons with Sister Sled. Tickets available now at the Thunder Valley box office, Ticketmaster.com, and World One Presents.com. Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Look, I apologize. You know, Jay, he runs a great show, right? Yeah. One, of the, one of the things he does that's so great is, you know, hey, what do you want to hear? What kind of music do you want? So he yeah. just asked me, why do you, what do you, what, what, give me some rock. And I was like, ah. What? All I had was Incubus. It was like, oh, oh. I didn't. So I said, you know, I, I don't really have anything for you. So you kind of let him down there. But I didn't think I didn't think with everything at stake here, with the level of excitement we already have, I didn't think it was an Incubus moment. So no, I, definitely. Not I dropped the ball. There. Yeah. You, you, you know what, what that means, though? You you forfeit your uh, turn to select the music, you know? If, well, that's all up to it, Jay. It, I mean, that's fair. You know, but, you know, he's the one that calls those shots. Oh, oh that <laughs> what are you talking? I just texted him like ten songs. You know, here Jay, I need all this. a playlist. I got his whole Spotify. Right, he got my Spotify on, on cue right there. All I want to hear today is my standard because of the up and down the uh, Ohio players. Roll okay, out. I got you. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. All right, of love, say what? Right now, <laughs> say what? It's time for Drapes takes. Calm down, line. Calm down. Take it easy, man. Just take it easy. <laughs>
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get right into it. Coming off a fresh, nice win in Orlando. A huge win. De'Aaron Fox. Can I give De'Aaron Fox some credit? Yes. Because that dude I thought was tremendous. Remember, he was 10 of 30 against Washington. Took 15 three-pointers. People are like, oh, my gosh. He's taking too many threes. He, what he did the other night, and I know he was only 3 of 12 from three, but I thought he had timely threes, the 31 points, 10 of 22 from the field. But most importantly for me was his defensive pressure and activity. Three steals in that game. I thought De'Aaron Fox was clutch for the Kings. And remember, this was no Malik Monk in there. So that fourth quarter Fox had to come back. I thought he played a perfect game. You know, wow. I, I, I thought De'Aaron Fox, you know, forget it like, like I said, the 3 of 12, sure, you would like him to make shots, but nothing seemed forced to me. Nothing seemed out of character or anything like that. I thought he played a really good game, and I want to give him some love. You know, it had to be a huge relief for him is the fact that he was able to get to the line. Yeah, I think he went to the line nine times, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Officials have not been sending him to the line, which we'll talk a little more about. He certainly has earned his trips to the stripe. He hadn't been getting them, but he got him on Saturday. Yeah, and let me say this, too. Close game, right? Tight game against Orlando. Fox was 5 for 5 in the fourth quarter from the mm-hmm. The Kings as a team was 8 for 9. And so when Fox plays bad, I, I hear all the stuff out there on social media, some of the callers as well, all these threes, 30 shots. You know what? I thought he was the difference maker in that game the other night. So give De'Aaron Fox some love. Mm-hmm. I also want to give his backcourt running mate some love. My guy, Keon Ellis. I tell you what. What's that? The thing about Keon that's so tremendous, and I was thinking about this as I was driving into today for the show. Monty McNair didn't make any moves at the trade deadline. We criticized them. What are they doing? But the biggest move made this season for the Kings was getting Keon Ellis in the rotation. He has been arguably their third best player over the last week or so. You can make it, all right, fourth if you want to include Malik. But his consistency on the defensive end, and then he gives you a career-high 19 points, Whitey. If the dude, and he's been making his threes, look at his percentage. You know, he's a 39% three-point shooter at last check. He has been found money, I think, for the Sacramento. He is the Kings. Hold up, Whitey. I know you're about to jump in, but I'm going to make an analogy here. He is the King's Brock Purdy. I was thinking that. He is myself. Sacramento's Brock you. Purdy. A I'm guy you, you got on your roster, you're not expecting a whole lot, and then you give him an opportunity, and you're like, oh, we found something here. Yeah, that's what's happening. fell in our lap. Yes. Yeah, to your point. Um, you know, during the offseason, we were waiting for Monty to make a move. Didn't make a move. Deadline, didn't do anything. What did we talk about a lot? This guy, that guy, is he a fit? Is that guy a fit? He could be a fit. Don't know if he's a fit. Keon Ellis is a perfect fit. Am I right? Perfect. Three fit. and D big guard. Yes. Perfect and, and, fit. And I was worried about the, the the three part of it. Could he knock down shots? But he hit some big shots. He hit a step back three. three. And I'm like, that's one of those. Keon, that's not your game. Me too. Oh, I guess I it like, is your uh, game. I I know. You know, whoa. Right. He was huge, I thought, for the Kings uh, late in that game, man. So shout out to Keon Ellis. Uh, he, he was massive. My last Drapes take, and this has nothing to do with the Orlando game. It has nothing to do with Washington. It's about tonight. It's about tomorrow. It's about Friday. This is the biggest regular season week for the Sacramento Kings. You tell me, guys. I can't remember the last time a week was this important for the Sacramento Kings. My guess would be 06 that last year they made the playoffs before, you know, last year. Right, I don't right. know they had to they were way beyond they had to scramble. I'd have to look it up. That'd be my guess, but to your point it's been a long time. This is one where, you know, we talked about going 2 and 1 on the road trip. Uh and that, and that was nice to find a dandy. But this I think is a week and there are if we include Sunday of next week also where 4 and 0 oh, should be the that that should be the expectation. Anything short of that, especially against Dallas, when you have two against them, you got to sweep those two games. In my opinion, White, you can't just you know 
because if you give them one and you get one this time next them. week we're in this we're yeah. in the same position we're yeah. at right now they get a split here for them that's basically a double. A- exactly and so i think this needs to be a four and a week for the sacramento kings and uh i know no one wants to hear about it and this is not making excuses but that's tough tonight to focus on the task at hand right when you got this huge game tomorrow yeah it, it really is because they know the standings they know what's at stake this week you know, but you got a Philly team that's coming in, actually playing a little bit better basketball as of late. Got a big win yesterday against the Clippers. I just think, you know, tonight shows me whether this team has matured. Hmm. Same thing with the Washington game. I thought they had turned the corner. I thought they had re- achieved a level of maturity. Well, clearly they had. But now you have another opportunity. And Philly got some talent. Tobias they do. can light it up. Tyree found that out last time they were there. Right, exactly. There was no Embiid last time, and 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 the Sixers uh, mopped you with the floor. They won ten in a row against you, and so I think this tonight is a game where you can show some maturity out here if you're the Sacramento Kings. Uh, let me ask you real quick. I know you guys talked about it Friday. What did happen against Washington? Why are you bringing it? That's not that's not part of Drape Steaks. Well, you said you were done. You said that was your well, I got, Hold on. Drape Steaks is brought to you by <laughs> Alsco Uniforms. Discover why it pays to keep clean with Alsco Uniforms. All right. Let's talk about that. Real quick. Alsco Uniforms. Watch the Orlando game. They had an ad on the table in Orlando. In Orlando, yeah, too? Like, Alsco Uniforms. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I see, like, the ball boys and people, you know, when they wear their jackets out here, mm-hmm. Alsco uniforms yeah. on the back. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't know they so were. They are riding wide. your back to even bigger Yes, things. exactly. I, I yeah. just got in on the ground <laughs> ground floor with them, you know. But what, what happened Thursday against Washington, a, a couple of things we talked about. One, we talk about defensive pressure and how much better the Kings are defensively as of late. They weren't good defensively in that game. And I'm talking about at the point of attack. Kyle Kuzma opened up that game with several drives to the bat. Like, he was able to get into the – they allowed 60 points to the Wizards. And I know the Wizards, if I'm correct, are a top five team at points in the paint. They like to drive in there. But come on, man. Yeah. You know, I I thought – Kuzma and Denny Avdi, I was like, whoa. Right. Those guys are great. (laughs) Those were like, seriously. (laughs) And so I I think defensively – uh, the inability uh, to lock down on a perimeter and stop the drive. And then they missed a lot of shots, man. And we talked about De'Aaron Fox and the 30 shots. I didn't think De'Aaron Fox was out there hunting for his shots. I thought he was trying to put on his Superman cape and rescue the team. Remember, he missed his first nine attempts. Right, right. You know, the team missed their first 11 three-pointers. And so so he was basically, he shot 50% after that after terrible that, start. Right, exactly, exactly. And, you know, and, and also, if you don't make threes, like if we talked about it also, the three is such a big part of what they do. They missed their first 11. And I've said it time and time again. You give a team hope. You give a team, you know, inspiration. And, and, and I joked with it about Jay the other day. This Wizards team, Dude, they already have their off-season vacation plan set. They got their hotels booked, their <laughs> flights booked, and you gave them a chance got, to got act- their activities, activities, <laughs> right? The kids' activities and everything. They done booked their snorkeling adventures. Yes. They got all that yeah. already set. Bins are ready. They know where they're going to be <laughs> the day after the regular season ends. But you gave them some hope in the first quarter. And then that's what happened. It took off from there. Don't you think the Kings were even a little surprised by the way that game was going after they caught up right before the end of the first yeah. half and they caught yeah. them. And then that second half and it's like, they didn't, they, you can tell they didn't know what was going right. on. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. But then yeah. to come back, I know not to belabor that, to come back with that win over Orlando. Tremendous. Big win. And you know, you got some help, I think from the officiating a little bit. Really? What a foul on De'Aaron Fox. You know, uh, uh, who was it? Um, oh, and Suggs gave Suggs. the forearm no, shiver right. <laughs> into the backcourt. Look, Fox went over the top rope like <laughs> it was almost a delayed reaction. It was all, you know what De'Aaron Fox did, and, and it was masterful. He forced the official to make the call. Yeah. If Fox didn't go back or, you know, it, right, the ref probably would have let it play on. But he was about to topple over the half court line and the ref's like, Oh, I got to call that something. And so I give Fox credit for forcing the official 
to draw the uh to make the call on that. Dearon said, Hey, what do you want me to say? You push me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's different levels, right? Of pushing. Like, I don't know if it caused all that, right. but you know, it, it's called embellishing or drawing attention to, if you will. And uh that was massive, a massive play uh to end the game there. I thought the Kings were great in the Orlando game when it came to defending uh inbounds plays with the game on the line at the end of the game. You know, when Orlando's like in a couple times, the last two times in yeah. particular, and the defense was stellar. Yes. Especially that last possession, uh, they never had a shot. They never had a shot. And I'm like, what did Jamal Mosley draw up? It couldn't have been <laughs> Paolo Bancaro with what? Throwing backwards. Right. Going, almost. going back the yeah. other way towards yeah. the other bat. Like, and so, no, they did. And they dodged a, 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 a yeah. bullet also because they had three opportunities. Yeah. Like that Franz Wagner uh, three, I, I thought that was good. You know, Cole Anthony made a great a shot, you know, a couple possessions before. And so they escaped with the win, man. And it sort of, I don't want to say makes up for the loss to Washington, but can you imagine if you lose that game and you're one and two on that road trip? And so now you come back, this crowd is going to be amped up, fired up. They understand the magnitude of this week for Sacramento Kings basketball. And so I'm ready, man. Hey, we didn't tell people about tomorrow yet either. No, we uh, haven't. Should we do that? or? Yeah, we will do that when All we right. come back. Yeah, tomorrow, big, big day for, of course, the Kings and for Drive Guys listeners. Tell you all about that when we come back. Also tell you about uh, specifically why Saturday was such a huge relief for De'Aaron Fox when the Drive Guys roll on from the Golden One Center, Sacktown Sports. The NFL's leading rusher plays here. The handoff to McCaffrey walks in the end zone. Handoff to McCaffrey takes it right down to the goal line. He does his thing again. McCaffrey goes in motion right. Backwards pass led by Juszczyk. A block there. Hurdles the man. 10, 5, touchdown! C! You can hear all of Christian McCaffrey's touchdowns on your home for 49ers football. Sacktown Sports. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda, Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brett Lee Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. Get in on the action at Sky River Casino in Elk Grove. With over 80 table games, more than 2,100 slot machines, and a thrilling high limit room, you'll enjoy a casino experience on a whole new level. Visit skyriver.com today. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Fidium Fiber Internet is fast becoming a hometown favorite. With a dedicated connection and speeds up to 2 gigs, Fidium is winning over fans every day. Plans start at just 25 bucks a month, so everyone can experience the best internet in the game. Visit FidiumFiber.com. Right now, Mayda Chevy saves you 8000 off MSRP on new 2024 Hampton Silverado LT Crew Cab four-wheel drives after rebate. It's a Mayda Chevy exclusive. See dealer for details. ms 331 See all the savings at MaydaChevy.com. Together, let's drive. There is a different vibe at night at the Hagen Oaks Range, powered by Top Tracer. It's more relaxed with golfers and newbies side-by-side enjoying the technology used on televised golf tournaments. Play a variety of fun games. Play Pebble Beach. Compete against friends at the Hagen Oaks Driving Range. Or treat yourself to nine holes on the McKenzie putting course. Hungry? The Hangout Food Truck offers burgers, chicken strips, and more. And don't forget to check the summer-long free concert schedule at the Hagen Oaks Driving Range, Fulton Avenue, and Cap City Freeway. Hey, guys. Do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. 
Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere. It's all here. Number one claim based on 2022 total new and Honda certified pre-owned vehicle car sales from American Honda Motor Company's own one report. Hi everyone, it's Emron Pilati, the host of the True Sports Car Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I'm excited about our second location at the Roseville Galleria as True Sports Cars continues our expansion. And to celebrate this day, we're excited to announce that Kevin Herter from the Sacramento Kings will be signing autographs on March 30th at 3 p.m. You can get your tickets for this event right now by going to truesportscards.com, searching Kevin Herter in the search bar and buying your ticket. Limited tickets are available, so please go to the website, truesportscards.com, and get your Kevin Herter tickets right now. For a precision-crafted performance, the decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at acuraofstockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision-crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and acuraofstockton.com. The Sacramento Kings five-game homestand begins tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. The push for the postseason is here, and every game is critical. Dribble handoff to Malik. Can he do it again? Pocket pass back to Sabonis. The two-hand hammer. That could be a dagger. It's 115-107. Malik Monk with the assist pass for Damata Sabonis. Listen to all the thrilling moments beginning tonight at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. The Drive Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Satown Sports. Yes, coming to you from Golden One Center. Kyle Draper powered by a popcorn. He's on the hunt for some. <laughs> now, can't blame him. No, he's go ahead. We got you covered. He'll be back with us uh, any second here. Uh, Whitey and Jay got you covered till he returns. Want to let you know about tomorrow, and it looks like from the comments, some people already know about this. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the show from the area near the arena uh, as we get ready tomorrow for the Mavericks coming in. We're going to do this show from Beach Hut Deli. So we'd love for you to come by, say hi, have some delicious Beach Hut Deli sandwiches. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow, our show, 2 to 5.30 tomorrow from the Beach Hut Deli. Also hoping tomorrow to really get everybody warmed up for what I'm hoping will be our efforts to show the basketball nation what Domas is about. We've got a great opportunity now. He, in a way, is going to set a record of sorts tonight, most likely. Uh, and he's zeroing in on another Kings franchise record, if I'm not mistaken, for double doubles. And we all know, every Kings fan knows that nationally he's not getting, Domas is not getting the attention that he deserves. So tomorrow night with a nationally televised game, I'm hoping that Kings fans can rally and remind everybody watching what they're missing, what they're failing to note here. Maybe we can do MVP chance every time he goes to the line. I don't know. Lots of signage. Uh, it'd be great if we had time to get some T-shirts together. I don't know. But tomorrow, I'm hoping we can make that a really concerted effort on behalf of all fans to show the rest of the nation watching that game that, hey, dummy, Domas is having a great year. And you're just you're just oblivious to it. Let us show you how great he's playing and remind you what a great year he's having and how he is truly an MVP candidate. So that's tomorrow. And then, yes, tomorrow we'll be coming to you from uh, Beach Hut Deli. Looking forward to that. Jay, I don't think – are you going to be with us tomorrow, Jay, at Beach Hut Deli? Jay is uh, – uh, he's otherwise engaged – uh, right now, but we'll we'll find out because that's a big reason. That's a big uh, selling point whether Jay's going to be part of it or not. Do you know Drapes is? Do you know if Jay's going to be there tomorrow or not at the Beach Hut Deli? Yes, he will be. All right, yeah, that's, Jay yes. will be on site. Nice, he, he will be on site. So uh, I invite everybody to come on down. 
broadcasting live two to five thirty yes. tomorrow. Yes, and I was just uh, saying, I'm hoping that tomorrow, once the game starts. We can, as Kings fans, just make a concerted effort to remind the nation and show the nation watching that, hey, Domas is having a great year. <laughs> you have uh, to realize yes. what a great year this guy is having. Are, are we following through with your idea or no? Well, we're, um, um, I don't we're know efforting. that we're going to be able efforting. to do that. Yeah, yeah. But at the very least, we can have fans, you know, chanting MVP every right. time he goes to the line on or national something, TV. right? Yes. yes. Exactly. Or coaches got it wrong, or something like yes, that. Like yes, yes, coaches got it wrong. Chant, or uh-huh. you know, something like that. Because that's a good one. Yeah, it, you like that one, right? You know. Yes. It, 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 here's the thing that's so crazy about it. Domas probably is going to be second team All NBA. Mm-hmm. He should be, mm-hmm. but he can't even be a, a All Star. Like it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And so he'll get his reward at the end of the season and his recognition. But for now. And I do think it's sort of given him a chip on his shoulder. And, okay, I'm not an all-star. I'm approved to you. And night in and night out, he's delivering. And I think it's another uh, chance tomorrow, too. And we got to let the world know. Like, that should be a topic on TNT's pregame. Yes. Uh You know, DeMontis Sabonis, maybe the most underappreciated star in the league. Right. Yeah. And we all know about the all-star thing and that's, that's water under the tower bridge. Now, nothing we could do about that, but the fact remains that he still is not getting the recognition he deserves. And he's a legitimate MVP candidate this year. Uh, what, what did, I was going to ask you that about the MVP uh, race and where Domas, why do you think he's not getting that? Is it just because he doesn't score a whole lot of points? Is it because he's not flashy in terms of dunking and, and shooting step back threes? Why do you think he isn't getting the love that uh, he deserves? Uh, to me, and I know Rick Camlow, we had him on recently, and he agreed with me. To me, it's probably as simple as he's not scoring 30-plus a game. You know, mm. I still think for a lot of fans, they it starts with that. MVP's got to be like your – he's got to be a monstrous score. He's got to be a big-time score. I think Domas could score more. Right. He put his mind to it. But I think that's why. Still, and again – just so we're clear, none of us, we're not saying he needs to be the MVP this year, but people are not, people are around the country are oblivious to the fact that he is one of the candidates. He deserves a look and he's having an MVP caliber season for a team that's having a good year. Yeah. And, and I'm on NBA.com. They have their MVP ladder. Uh, yeah. Just came out on Friday. Uh, they have Doma six. Okay. Behind Jokic, Shea. Okay. I'm fine with that. Those two guys have. Giannis, Luca. See, our guy doesn't have the reputation of those guys. Tatum that score as many points. Like Tatum, I understand. Tatum, yeah, sure. yeah. But, I mean, but Luca. Well, we'll have a chance to do something about that tomorrow. Yeah, we? yeah, exactly. We'll have a <laughs> and and and, and, I, and I will say this too. And I don't follow any of these other guys on social media or anything like that. But I do follow Demontis Sabonis. Here's a guy putting up Wilt-like numbers, uh, Hall of Fame kind of numbers, a a tremendous season like we've never seen before. And then seven hours ago, he posts a picture of his family. And it's just with their cowboy hats on and hearts. Mm -hmm. And he's just a good dude, too. You know what I mean? Like, he's somebody that that is getting it uh, done off the floor and on the court. And you're right, man. I, I, I think... He should get some more recognition. I think De'Aaron should as well. But those guys aren't flashy. They don't put themselves out there uh, like that. And, and so, so tomorrow we can put them out there. Yes. For tomorrow them. as the 18,000, yeah. 17,000 plus in here uh, for sure. And I would love for Domas to have like a 28, 16, and 12 kind of game. Just something like for the, the entire nation to see mm-hmm. uh, him put in I'm that work. You. Yeah, I love that chant. Maybe we can come up with some more. Maybe some of the smartest right. listeners in radio can between now and game time. Let me hold on tomorrow. for a second. Wait. What you say? Because, Coach has got it wrong. Yes, that's good. Because, and that, that's what pisses me off about this whole situation with DeMontis Sabonis. If the fans didn't vote him, I get it. Okay, he's not flashy. If, if media members... All right, they don't stay up and watch the East Coast bias, big mark. But these are the insiders, the guys that supposed to know the game better than anybody else. Right? These are the guys that are 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 supposed to not be biased. Like you ever see the MVP voting and the players vote and some of the names that they put up? Like they think it's a joke. The coaches are supposed to get it right, Mm -hmm. and they got this guy wrong. Yes. 
coach has got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's tomorrow. And if you get a chance to join us at Beach Up Deli, we'd love to see you uh, tomorrow. Real quick here. I just want to mention this. We've been talking about De'Aaron and the big night he had against Orlando. And he got to the line. What was it? Eight and nine from the foul yeah, line. Eight I think of nine it was. De'Aaron Fox. Um, we've talked a lot about how whistles are down since the all-star break and we're not seeing as many fouls called um, the two most affected players as foul calls have gone down have been Dame and Steph Curry. Mm. Each of those guys down about three free throws per game. They are followed by Spencer Dinwiddie, Bam Adebayo and De'Aaron Fox, all of Hell whom yeah. had seen a decrease of more than two attempts per, per game. game. And you yeah. can see after the games, when he talks about it, he says, well, we can pretend they're not calling it differently, but they are. It's getting to him a little bit, and it was great to see him get to the get, line. Get to the line after – how do you not go to the line at all against the oh, Wizards? Oh, yeah. Wizards? Like, I, I, you know, and I understand he took a lot of threes, but come on. And, you know, did you say Shea was affected too by that uh, rule, uh, you know, the lack of calls? According or? to this, it's just Damon Steph okay. uh, on the list, three down, three att- attempts a game, Dinwiddie, Bam, and De'Aaron Fox. And, you know, this was something I was thinking about, Whitey, on the drive-in. Actually, De'Aaron Fox and free throws, and just free throws in general. I think I might have been listening to Sirius X. Oh, were they talking about the Lakers? Yeah, the the Lakers. uh, And (laughs) do we want our guys? Let me ask you this. This is a legit question, Kings Nation. Would we like our guys to embellish a little more, sell the fouls a little more? Because I don't feel like, you know, we're not hunting for fouls. You know, like Shea Gilgis is a master at throwing his head back and getting to the line. Joel and B when healthy. Like, should De'Aaron do that? Maybe so. Something has to be done. Right. Here's why. Free throw attempts per field goal attempt. Yes. Okay. Free throws per field goal attempt. You want a lot, right? Yep. You want to shoot a lot. Last year, the Kings were seventh in the NBA. Free throws per field goal attempt. That's that's good. This year, they are 28. 28? Yeah. Wow. So that's why you asked me, do you want them to do that? Uh... Normally, we might say no, but yes, something has to be done. Right. 28? Yes. Why do you think that is? Like, it's the same style, right? They're playing the same. Because they got the rep. All those guys shoot threes, and too often they do stand out there and shoot threes. You know, sometimes the offense gets stagnant when they're not making threes, and the guys just stand there and chuck threes, and the officials are aware of that. They don't call as much, I, I guess. I don't have as much going to the basket. And and De'Aaron hasn't been getting the fouls. And we know Domas doesn't right. get the foul calls that you can see he deserves. Yes, and, and that's the thing. It's uh, especially DeMontis Sabonis, especially him. Like, we can visibly see him getting hacked when he's down low. Right. Getting slapped on the arm, getting body checked, that kind of thing. And they just won't call it. And I think it's because he doesn't sell it as much. You know, he doesn't. He just plays like, through he it. He just plays through it. Exactly. It's like uh, he's like the Terminator just swatting flies off of him. You know, get off me. And but I, I think and this is the problem that the NBA has. If you're not going to call the foul. And that, that's why I said with De'Aaron Fox the other night uh, against Orlando, they weren't going to call that until he, you know, mm-hmm. made them call it. I think if you're Sacramento, you have to force these officials to make the call. And uh, I don't know what more Domas can do, though. Like, I mean, because he's playing through contact. He's playing hard. But it was like the game uh, against the Knicks. And, and I was talking to Katie. It, it got to a point where, okay, if the refs gonna aren't going to call it, then I'll have to take it into my own hands. And you don't want that. You want you want the officials to not be, you know, um, swayed by the jersey the laundry a team is wearing, Lakers, <clears throat> Warriors, if you will. You want them to be, hey, if you see a foul, call a foul. That, that's it. Yeah, it raises an interesting question that a lot of people are talking about. Are the games better? Is the basketball better since they've started calling fewer fouls? We're back with that conversation from the Golden One Center to drive guys on Sacktown Sports. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-385-9302 now. 
Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-385-9302. That's 800-385-9302. What do you have to lose? Call 800-385-9302. Again, 800-385-9302. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are going to function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Right now, the sewer system is probably the last thing on your mind. And that's okay, because at the Sacramento Area Sewer District, it's our first priority. If you have a sewer problem like a slow drain or a backup, call us first, day or night. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave inviting you to make the switch to electric this spring and save big with American Energy. Stay ahead of the spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates on a new ultra high efficiency comfort system. American Energy is providing huge rebates from SMUD as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you right now. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year round all electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free in-home energy efficiency analysis and see where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Been serving the greater Sacramento area since 1981. A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Learn more by calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. Call 916-520-9990. Call 916-520-9990 now. Your flagship station for the Bean Team, Sacktown Sports. Kings and the Sixers tonight. Classic trap game scenario for the Kings. Hundred percent trap. Game. Ah, I don't like that. I, know I agree with you, but I don't like that. You know, they still got Maxi, but no Joel Embiid um, coming off a win against the Clippers. You know, a Monday night game. Everybody's talking about two against Dallas. Yes, up. yes. Yeah, this is a classic trap game, I think. Now, this is, of course, for the Kings, the first home game after a road trip. Mm-hmm. How have they done in those? Not good. <laughs> it is not right. Not good. It's been bad. Yes, yes. yeah. It's uh, that first game back is usually pretty ugly yeah you know in fact if you ask a kings fan to name the worst losses this year other than that portland loss which was up there yeah just about every one of them is a first home game back after a road trip the charlotte one yeah. I, I believe detroit. so detroit yeah you're right chicago miami what, what? <laughs> but this will change tonight yeah. Right? oh yeah 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 oh yeah oh yeah stuff. you know this is a oh, new yeah. day for the Sacramento Kings. No question you know. about that. No, this is uh it, it's definitely a trap game. It's definitely going to be a tough one. But that's what's so frustrating about it too, Whitey, because the team goes away. They're away from Golden One for a while. The fan base is so geeked up, excited to welcome them back, and they come out and lay an egg. And, mm-hmm. and so that's you know, and I'm doing post game tonight. And so hopefully I won't be upset or angry or frustrated. Hopefully, we're excited about uh this big win tonight. Two and five in the first game back from a trip mm-hmm. with losses to see if you remember any of these. Last season or seven, <laughs> Miami, uh, the Pacers, and uh, the Bulls. Darn. Yeah. So I remember every single one of those. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Th- this is going to be different, though. This is, uh, you know, we're 12 games left in the season, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and the thing is, and I said it last week with Jay, if the problems, 
were happening in October, November. Okay. But the issues have been all season long. You got to imagine at some point things will change for this sack. The light will come on. And, you know, you can't overlook this Sixers team. I mean, they just, the game against the Clippers yesterday wasn't as close as, as you know, it, 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 the final score indicated. Like, they control that game all throughout. Clippers made one run in the second half, but the Sixers pretty much controlled that game. So you gotta you gotta come in with the right mindset. Mm-hmm. And the Sixers, let's see, they're four and seven in their last eleven. Mm-hmm. So opportunity here. And as we said earlier, the Sixers, this will be their third game in four nights. So well, yes, because they played yesterday. So yeah. yeah, opportunity there. How do you feel about the quality of play since the league has been calling fewer fouls? Uh, I read somewhere. Well, I can tell you exactly where it was. SI.com. Somebody said, "Oh, the games are better." We had, um, I think it was last week when you were traveling, Jerry Reynolds came on and Jerry said, you know, I, it's kind of like, I like it better when there aren't as many interruptions. On the other hand, to me, sometimes there's obvious fouls that are not being called. And that just makes me feel like I'm not even watching basketball. Right. Yeah. How do you feel about the way the game has gone since they clearly, since the break, have been calling fewer fouls? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I a hundred percent hate it, to be honest with you. and. I was born in the 70s. I'm a child of the 80s, 90s. I remember the rough and tough basketball. And I feel like at times we're getting back to that. You know, I understand the Lakers and Pacers scored, you know, 295 points yesterday combined. But I like freedom of movement from the players. And here's the thing that's so upsetting about this, Whitey. The NBA before the season, they have like league meetings. One of the points of emphasis going into the season was making sure that players' freedom of movement is not restricted. It seems like the NBA has thrown that out the window now. It's like, you know, it's not quite hand-checking, but you can get your hands on guys. You can be super physical now. And I don't like it from an aesthetically pleasing standpoint because all it does, as far as I'm concerned, is frustrate the players even more. As a fan watching it, I'm like, that should have been a foul. Where's the foul? You know, I'm looking at it. And it's almost like street ball, playground basketball. And I I, I just, there needs to be some sort of balance. You know, I I think we've gone the other way too much now with some of the games I've seen. In principle, I like the idea of, hey, we're going to let them play a little more and call fewer fouls. All right, that should work. But I'm with you in practice Officials seem like they're not sure anymore what a foul is and what a foul isn't. And there's too many right. instances where yeah. that's obviously a foul and they're not calling it. So I'm not sure what I'm watching anymore. Yeah. And and it's it's getting rid of the ticky tack fouls. Okay, that's okay, great. Right. I get but that. not calling fouls when guys are getting hammered in the back of the head on a drive to the basket. That's not basketball. You, you know what it, what it is though. What needs to happen in the NBA. Don't get fooled by these actors out there uh-huh. selling calls and uh-huh. flopping out there, you know. And, and I know it's hard to to do uh, for the trained eye, uh, at, you know, at live speed, you know, because these guys are incredibly good at making you think there's a foul. But now you're penalizing the smaller guys too, the less fit, like a guy like De'Aaron Fox. You mentioned his numbers, free throw numbers, uh, you know, have gone down recently. Well. The sleight of frame guys, Fox, Trey Young, if he was Steph Curry, like those guys, they got to work extra hard now to to get buckets, especially in the paint. I I just don't like it, man. I I think I I don't think there was a problem with the fouls. It was a problem with guys acting to draw the fouls. That's where the issue is. It isn't that, you know, guys are, you know, uh, ticky tack fouls are being called. It's that. Players are duping the officials and mm-hmm. in baiting them into thinking that there was a foul. That's the issue. And and to combat that, I don't think you should just say, all right, we're going to swallow our whistle a little more and let them play. Yeah, it's pretty clearly to me an overcorrection. Right. Where, yeah, like I said, if you want to get rid of uh, ticky-tack fouls on the perimeter, fine. But then there are so many players complaining now. And players have been complaining. It used to be, if you were a player that complained like Rick Barry or Danny Ainge, like you really stood out. Now, everybody, everybody, if you don't complain, you stand out. But now guys are complaining and they're getting really angry. And it's pretty clear to me that 
they're not getting calls that they were getting earlier this year right. when they're like I saw last night watching uh, the Warriors and the T Wolves and uh, Ant Man went nuts on a call mm. and it's like okay well he's mad because he's getting hit in a way that has been called a foul his whole career and right. earlier this year was called a foul so I don't really see the upside of that. Well, it goes back to the point you made, right? What is a foul? And if you see a foul, call a foul. Like, yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be that hard, you know? If there's contact, call the foul. And this whole let the players decide or, you know, we're going to, you know, just, uh, you know, make it a more physical game. I don't think people want to see that. I, I don't, you know, it, there was a reason the 90s in terms of viewership and, and, and apathy towards the NBA it was down, you know, like the games were, you know, were slugfest. Like we like up and down players in their bag. Got what we don't like is the actors out there, mm -hmm. the floppers. That's what we need to address. Not the, the number of fouls being called and things like that. It's, 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 it's on the players, man, to stop flopping around. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know who we haven't talked about yet? Who'll be in the building tonight. Sony mentions on the, uh, on the chat, Ooh. your buddy from Disneyland, right? Your Disney buddies here. Oh, my guy, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna get him to sign that picture we took. Yeah, nice. buddy buckets. <laughs> I, I feel like we've seen that dude a lot this season, uh -huh. you know. Uh, Pacers, uh, obviously now Sixers, and man, he's gonna get a. I don't even know how he's been playing in Philly. Like, is he good? He didn't play that much yesterday. No, he didn't play that much, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, are you ready for 12 games that will define the Kings season? We tackle that next year from the Golden One Drive Guys Sackdown Sports. Spring is in the air, but so are airborne allergens like tree pollen, grass, mold, and ragweed. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage springs into action quickly, helping you breathe more clearly in just 30 seconds. And you don't need a never-ending cycle of decongestants that can leave you feeling drowsy. Navage is the fast and easy drug-free allergy solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier. Get Navage today so you can get outdoors and enjoy your favorite springtime activities. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Breathe easy. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you, if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American-made favorites like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties, or spacious new Explorers and Expeditions, plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco Sports, all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford, right here in Sacramento. You can buy any new Ford with zero down, unapproved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. The Amish have a reputation for craftsmanship, determination, and quality. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. You know, those virtues sound quite similar to the Keys family and the day-to-day -day values on display at Naturewood. The Amish furniture craftsmanship begins with the finest hardwood, shaping and molding the raw materials into one-of-a-kind art. In addition to the classic styles long sought and revered by discriminating furniture lovers, Naturewood Home Furnishings offers a vast selection that includes transitional, modern, farmhouse, arts and crafts, and other stunning styles all available in the ultimate Amish standard of excellence built over centuries. All Naturewood Amish furniture is on sale right now for a limited time. Let the Naturewood team guide you through their selection of Amish furniture that will be with you forever. Naturewood Home Furnishings off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. At L.L. Floyd, we've been a trusted partner to pros for over 30 years. With over 400 nationwide warehouses full of in-stock, job-ready inventory, you'll get what you need. 
And our exclusive pro pricing means that pros never pay retail. Because at LL Flooring, all we do is floors. So we're going to do it right. Sign up for a free pro account today to start getting pro benefits. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Take it on the local level. Live and local, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. Sacktown Sports. The only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. Nobody in Vallejo, California will ever forget the day they played at the downtown disco in Vallejo. The Ohio Players. Oh, yeah. There. Yes. I remember this jam. I was not able to make it to their performance, but they're still talking about it in, in B Town. <laughs> and we're back on the King's roller coaster tonight, or are we? That roller coaster was down in Washington, then back up, up, up in Orlando. Where do we go from here? At least Kyle Draper, we finally have some clarity. We know that up or down, there's only 12 games left in this thing. Yeah, this is the final push, man. Yeah. And it's uh it, it's a difficult stretch for the Sacramento Kings, but if you if, two years ago, if we at, were at to ask fans, would you take being in this predicament right now? People would love it. Yep. Meaningful games late in the season. That's what you want as a fan base. And we really haven't had many of those seasons. <laughs> you know, it seems like after last year's like, oh yeah, that's what we always have. But it had been a long time. So as you probably know, the Kings wrap it up here with uh Philadelphia, then two against Dallas, then Utah and the Clippers. All home games. So a five game home stand. Then at the Knicks, at Brooklyn, at Boston, at OKC. That's a pretty challenging four-game yes. trip. Then they wrap up the season after that with three home games, New Orleans, Phoenix, and Portland. And then we'll see where we are and get ready for playoff time. Yeah, and they only, out of the 12, they only have three that are so-called easy, easier games, right? Like, well, Portland, Brooklyn, Portland, and, and Utah. Utah. Yeah. Outside of that, Knicks, Boston, OKC. Clippers are terrible. Phoenix, right now. Clipper. <laughs> They're terrible right now. I tell you what, that Clippers game could be massive, yeah. Whitey. Right now, you're three behind the Clippers. And, yes, you know, yes. It, 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 it's possible. Like they are reeling right now. Something's wrong in LA. And we said that last month. And since then, they've continued to struggle. And so I'm not saying that the fourth seed is a, a possible, you know, a, a, a it probability, sure but it's a possibility. Yes, 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 exactly. And I wouldn't sleep on New Orleans from getting that fourth seed. So why not us get the fifth seed, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about just get in at the six. I still think there's room to move up in the stand. By the way, I know we're talking about the Kings. We're focused on the Kings. Yes. Nobody around here cares about the Golden State Warriors, but are the Warriors going to miss the play-in? <laughs> They lost again oh last night. Gosh. They lost at <laughs> home to the Pacers on Friday. Then they lost yeah. in Minnesota yesterday. Steve Kerr now is defending how many minutes he's playing. Steph. Yeah. Think about this. Remember last year their struggles were on the road. Whitey, they are 18 and 19 at home. Mm -hmm. They are one game under 500 at home. Yep. They can't protect home court. Nope. And so – I'm looking at my Houston Rockets. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a big Houston Rock. My guy, Ime Udoka and Dylan Brooks. You've been, yes, you have been on board. Yes, I, and so they're only a game behind the Warriors right now. And so that would be, that would be a tremendous collapse. You know, and with Drake, I think the say, NBA would we're not worried in. about the Rockets. Yeah. So you should be. Yeah, I think Commissioner Silver would step in. But it, and make it like a, we have a committee play in. Now there is a committee that selects the teams in the right, play in. Right. That final spot is a commissioner's <laughs> choice, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Golden State, pardon me, Golden State, one game up on Houston, but they are essentially two because of the tiebreaker. And I mentioned the tiebreaker because that's something at stake here between the Kings and some of these teams that they still have left to play. Uh, the Dallas tiebreaker is still to be determined and also the Phoenix tiebreaker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Phoenix the one is, is super. I, that I, I believe the series is two two with Phoenix, and you got one more left. You know, uh -huh. it's the odd schedule with because of the in season tournament, you play the Suns five times, and so it's two and two right now. You gotta win that yeah. one. You gotta win that one. 
And the same thing with Dallas. If I'm correct, we're up 2-0 on Dallas right now. Uh, I, I'll have to uh, – I got it right here. Let me pull it up. See, I'm on pr uh, pre- and post-game tonight. Like, right. So I didn't dive into the uh, stats like I, I, I usually do. Um, but, yeah, I think we're 2-0 uh, and o against Dallas uh, this season. And so the, the Mavs have a chance – to, yeah, uh, they can right still even ship. things yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So huge games left. One good thing about the fact that the end of the season is so near, the Kings, I think we saw this a little bit against Memphis, maybe against San Antonio. Let's say they find themselves in a tough game tonight. Yeah. What happened before, those tough losses before games are supposed to win, it really doesn't matter. You know, that's that's done with now. Right. I think you can focus, and I think this team has shown they're capable of focusing on the task at hand tonight. Exactly. I'd like to think so anyway. Yeah, uh, that's the hope, right? And, you know, losing uh, against Washington is bad. Then but you come back. Yeah. yeah but you got a chance now. And yeah. that's the beautiful thing about the NBA. You know, it's ultimately they are only just one game. Like, you lose a Washington, bad loss, awful, yes. But it's just one game. Uh -huh. And, you know, when it's all said and done, we're hoping that we don't look back at that one game and saying, man, if you would have just. But like I said, and you mentioned it early, everything is still there for them. Top six seed, top five seed. They control their own destiny. And, you know, Alan Styles had tweeted something out last week about they lost it. No, with two games against Dallas, one against Phoenix, the Kings still control whether they're in the top six or not. It's an interesting question you raised. This week is the most significant late season late regular season week in yep. history since i don't know i have to go back and check maybe 2006 just massive massive games this week massive games and you know this is what you want as an organization as a fan base you want think about this the nba just announced something we had on the drive guys friday i don't know if you heard this whitey when i mentioned that the knicks kings game on Thursday, April 4th, is now a TNT game. Uh -huh. It's been flexed. All right. So it is a nationally televised game. We had that last week. Jay remembers. It was Friday we announced that. Well, anyway, when's the last time that the Kings were flexed into national TV the last two weeks of the season? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that shows you just the magnitude of where they are and the importance of these games. Mm -hmm. By the way, is Domas setting NBA history tonight or not? Oh, 100%. But uh, that's not really NBA history, is it? I mean, it's a well, cool thing. Well, it's not modern but, day NBA history, right? Yeah, but if we're going to celebrate him breaking, as we should, the franchise record, which was held by Jerry Lucas in 1960, whatever, then we have to acknowledge that <laughs> right? I mean, because we're back to, to 68. Pour cold water on this. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, why, why just saying, that? I'm just saying it's a cool thing, but let's not pretend that this is history, NBA history being made tonight. That's all. It's a tremendous thing. But I think he still has a chance to break the record, franchise record for consecutive double doubles over two seasons. Yes, he could. Yes. Okay. That, that's, yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, here's the thing, though, with this Kevin Love streak. Nobody ever talked about that. It's not like Wilt scoring 100 or anything. I know. Nobody, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, Kevin Love did have 53. Like, nobody, it's not in the, you know, You're right. like You're right. basketball reference. I don't know if they have that listed as, you know. You're right. That's stat, another, yeah, right? it's a really cool thing, and it speaks to how consistent he is. But I was looking up, and I think the next one on the list would be Elvin Hayes in 1974. Well, Elvin Hayes probably had no idea in 1974 right. he had that many double doubles. Right. There was no such thing as a double yeah. double. And, and 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 when you do know it, you're more aware of it as you're playing too. Like yeah. you know, if you're at 19 and nine with three minutes to go, you're like oh shoot, I got to get this extra rebound. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, we're going to celebrate it. I'll tell you what, if somebody down the road I 80 was doing it. <laughs> be like you, you know, we are not celebrating that, but it's our guy, so it's 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 something special. Yes, especially when he has a chance to do it right before he's on national television. Yes, uh, tomorrow. Hey, I apologize. I just lost my uh, oh, services what here. To my computer. Yeah, what's going yeah. on here, bro? If I was uh, just uh, I didn't do anything there or something yeah. like that. And I wanted to just real quickly address what's going on with uh, Shohei son yeah. today because Shohei Otani spoke with uh he released a statement thank you very much Graves. Yeah. 
my apologies to our uh, listeners and viewers. So Shohei issued his first statement since uh, whatever his interpreter did became news. And Shohei says he never bet on baseball uh, up until a couple of days ago. I didn't even know this was happening. Uh, so long story short, very sad and shocked about the theft allegations against his former interpreter. Shohei stands here officially as, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know what this guy was doing, and I'm very sad, but I'm innocent. So here's my take on the Shohei situation. Is there allegations that he bet on baseball? There's like, why, it, why is this a story? Why is this a big deal? Because it's not hard to imagine that, well, if his close, close friend was involved in it, Maybe he it was he was fronting for Shohei. Well, what so, if he did bet four point five million dollars or whatever it is on sports gambling? Well, if he just bet on sports gambling, it'd probably be with an illegal bookmaker. It'd be illegal. That no, I, or what if he is in Vegas one week and his guy did it for him or something? Well, that's the thing about this. You're you're right, but apparently this all came to light because Shohei's interpreter paid four and a half million dollars to an illegal bookmaker. Illegal in bookmaker, and, and Shohei and, was somehow linked to actually making the payments although he says i was loaning money to my guy i didn't know that i was going to this bookmaker that's what he's saying so you got a um, mlb player face of baseball giving four and a half million dollars to an illegal bookmaker that's why people are going whoa what's going on here but right now shohei's saying yeah i didn't know what i was doing I, i'm 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 not bothered by it at all that shohei if he did if he did it like it Gambling is such a big part of sports right now. Oh, it's everywhere. Did you see Reese Davis? And and, he, and this was something on uh, NCAA uh, on ESPN. They were talking about the tournament, and he called you know uh, sports gambling. What did he say? Um, I, I forget the the terminology he used. It was uh, uh, something like a risk free investment. He mm -hmm. called it, mm -hmm. and, and it's like this is the slippery slope that we're on, and so. You know, it, the league embraces gambling, NBA embraces gambling, NFL, MLB, and so uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care if he, if it was fifty thousand, would be, would we be okay with it? Is no, it's just that it's an illegal bookmaker and that amount of money. The whole issue is whether, okay, well, if he bet on that, does that mean that he bet on other things? And did he bet on baseball? And, you know, that's that's a little bit of a leap from here, that's but it's leap. worth it's worth looking into. It appears based on what he said and what we do know, it doesn't appear that's the case. Right. So it, other anything short of that, I, I'm I with guarantee you, even if he's on not soccer, the only player if he that bet on bet soccer on other or sports. Sports. Right. I, I exactly. Care. That's what I, I know. Athletes that bet and gamble on all kinds of stuff, not necessarily their sport, but I've seen guys, you know, bet on other things outside of their sport. And so I, I'm. Uh, because of Shohei, yeah. Like if this was Joe Schmo, uh, you know, the twenty-fifth man on the roster, this wouldn't be big. But because it's the face of Major League Baseball, that this has become huge. Yeah, baseball's probably like that's okay. We'll take any publicity, any publicity at this point, get, right? <laughs> right now, uh, when we come back, a look at the uh, Kevin Herter uh, prognosis, and uh, I have a question for Kyle Draper: Are the Kings? A really good shooting team. Next, we come back to the Golden One Center Drive Guys, Sacktown Sports. The Sacramento Kings five game homestand begins tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. The push for the postseason is here, and every game is critical. Dribble handoff to Malik. Can he do it again? Pocket pass back to Sabonis. The two hand hammer. That could be a dagger. It's 115 107. Malik Monk with the assist pass for Damata Sabonis. Listen to all the thrilling moments beginning tonight at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. And paid for by AG Marketing Group. Attention timeshare owners. If you need to get rid of your timeshare for any reason, please listen to the following message. Getting out of a timeshare commitment is not easy, and it takes time. But we specialize in helping consumers legally get rid of their expensive timeshares forever. Can't get the vacation dates that work for you? Maybe you felt taken advantage of or forced into the timeshare? Maybe you just can't continue to shoulder those monthly payments any longer. If you need to eliminate your timeshare commitment, then you need to take down this number, 800-823-1687. We will safely and legally get rid of your timeshare payments forever, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 
Don't continue to let your timeshare be a financial burden to you and your loved ones. Call us now at 800-823-1687. The call is free. The consultation is free. Call 800-823-1687. That's 800-823-1687. Again, 800-823-1687. The Drive Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Sattown Sports. Just talking about baseball. Uh, and the uh, Giants were in town yesterday. Coming up, bottom of the hour, we'll talk about the fact that Vivek yeah. uh, publicly addressing Sacramento's Major League future. So we'll get to that here. Uh, Drive Guys at the Goal One Center where we are getting ready here. You can hear in the background uh, halftime. I assume this is halftime. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, practices, rehearsals, because we're celebrating uh, Holi or Holi tonight. Yes. Which is a, a Hindu festival of colors. So, yes. yes. And, and you can see some of the uh, decorations around here, you know, the balloons over there. You got, okay, yeah. You know, it, look, it looks like a photo wall that you could take selfies and stuff. Oh, and pictures yeah. Wow. Over there. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun that. night. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's going to be fun because uh, the king's going to win tonight. Yeah, uh, yes, they're going to get a win. Even though I'm from Philly, that's my team. The Sixers grew up in Philadelphia, but my Kings need this win uh, tonight. Man. When did you make that? When did you tear away from them? When did you make that? Uh, when did you go solo? And I guess you know when the checks start clear from the Celtics and and the King. I <laughs> listen to Jay. <laughs> you know what though? I'm gonna keep it real. And Jay going to clown me for this, but I, I'm ready for that smoke. You said you're a Magic Johnson fan. Exactly. He was a Laker. I grew up a Lakers fan. Wow. Magic was my guy. Patterned my life like Magic, except the HIV. But everything, like Magic on the court, the, the sky, the baby running hook over the Celtics, I practiced that day like Magic was my guy. He played the Sixers in the finals three times, if I'm not mistaken. You know what's so crazy? I'll tell you this story. 1983, NBA Finals. Moses Malone and the Sixers against Kareem and the Lakers. I was cheering for the Lakers. Wow. I was eight at the time. Sacramento so the will Sixers take y'all. Won. <laughs> so when you're talking about how Philly is your hometown team, I now, can, can I finish my story? Let me. Yeah, I'm gonna show sure. you how I got to. No, that. Cut, cut okay. them off, Whitey. Just cut them off. About. We don't want to hear about the Lakers. No, no, Jay. No, Jay. I'm I'm trying to deliver the the, the real here. So. The Sixers won the championship. I'm eight years old, mind you. Yeah. And I'm sad. I'm upset. <laughs> You're I go a big hide. Sixers fan. I, I go behind behind a chair. Mom and dad's like, where's Kyle? Where's Kyle? I was hiding. Magic was my guy. So they dragged me out from under the chair, put me in the car, and we went around the car, driving around Philly, honking our horn that the Sixers had won a championship. Wow. Now, mind you. <laughs> This is when I was a kid. I was eight. Sure. This is like somebody growing up in Sacramento being a Warriors fan when they're young because Steph Curry's winning, you know. But when you move away, you represent your hometown. Like, so I rock and ride with Philly. The moment I left Philly, I had a Philly badge on me. But you didn't even root for them when you were there. I, that's, I, I did as I got older. But, but Magic Johnson was my guy. Okay. Back then, it was That's, either okay. Lakers or Celtics, it felt like, at that time. Yeah. And so, I, same thing with the Cowboys. Remember, Jay, I told you the Cowboys story, Big Yeah, yeah, like, true. But then they got Tony Romo, and I didn't like the Cowboys. Like, here's the thing. This is the problem with fandom. What if I don't like the players that my team has? But That's all fine, but you just you can't really, in my opinion, if you're going to – you know, I like this team. I like that team. That's fine. But then you can't have it both ways, you know, where I didn't root for the Sixers when they played the Lakers in the championship. But, boy, Philly, that, that, so that's going, my team. So if I, I claim a team I, when I'm eight, I just got to stay with them, huh? When I'm eight years old, I have to declare my fandom. Uh, You're a Lakers you, fan growing up. I was. I was. Oh, fan man, now? what is going oh, on here? here? Who's your team now? <laughs> exactly. See? <laughs> but so – And so I think you can claim your hometown no matter what at any point. Huh? Dude, I paid dues in that city. I paid taxes in that city. I went to school in that city. 
I earn the right to mm. claim Philadelphia. But you forfeit it by turning your back on them when they're in the finals. When I was eight years old. I, I forfeited my philly when I was eight. Haven't they We're going to ask like- my boy, my guy Keith Pompey. He's coming on at 430. Okay. He's from Philadelphia also. Sure. He writes for the Philadelphia Inquirer. We'll see what he says. Fellas. Because I guarantee you Keith Pompey was a Lakers fan growing up. What about this? And this, yeah. this is something yeah. I can agree with you on this, Drapes, is because I went to school in Texas and other places. When yeah. you do leave your hometown and or state, People kind of recognize you as that person. Like when I was in Texas, people, hey, Sack, what's up, Cali? People, that was my nickname, right? And so you do take on a persona of this, and I agree with this, is minus the Lakers and the Dodgers, you know, I can, if we're playing a Texas team, I'm rooting for the Padres. I'm rooting for the Chargers to beat the Cowboys. I'm rooting, you know, I can't root for the Chargers, I mean, the, the Lakers, and I can't root for the the, the Dodgers is just against my religion when it comes to sports. Right. But I do understand what you're saying, Drapes, is you do when you leave, which you've left the, left the nest of Philadelphia plenty of times, yeah. you do take on the persona of repping your own town. You do get a like an automatic yes. badge. That's that's exact. Thank you, Jay. Fine. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about, because when I leave Philly, like Jay said, people are. Yo, where you from? I'm from Philly. That's my, you know, that's my city. And so you start to rep it when you leave. Mm-hmm. But we know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand all that. I understand all that. Uh, what's the truth here as far as Kevin Herter is concerned? I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. I haven't heard of this. NBA Analysis Network. Quote, leak sources. Yeah, oh I know. I know. Where are you getting your sources from? Your info? Leak sources tell NBA Analysis Network. Again, I've never heard of it. That Herder is expected to miss the remainder of the season, even if the Kings were to qualify for the postseason. End quote. I don't know who they are or who the leak sources are, but I, we have not heard anything to that effect locally, right? From the beat writers or right. anybody who is connected with the organization. Right, obviously. exactly. Yeah, we have not heard an official word. I think the prevailing speculation belief, if you will, is that, yeah, it's, he's going to be out. And, and and here's the thing that concerns me um, about his injury. Um, left shoulder dislocation, uh, they call it. But if I'm correct, the Kings also mentioned uh, torn labrum torn uh, yeah labrum like tear ripped out right. of there you get that labrum gets torn. now isaiah thomas it the pizza guy his was a hip tear he came back and played through it and it was never the same he was never the same player i think with kevin herter and this is the same shoulder that he's had some issues with prior to realize that. as well uh-huh. and so i think in his rookie year in atlanta he had uh some issues with it and so we got three weeks left to go in the season. I would be shocked if he's back on the floor. For the Kings. One of the keys to all this, it's it's something that we have no way of knowing. As you mentioned, the shoulder comes out of the socket, the socket lined with that labrum, so the labrum's torn. Like, yeah, how bad is the tear? We don't know. Is it something where they have to operate and, like, sew it back into the bone? We don't, we know. don't know. But if it is, that, that just takes, a, no matter who you are, that takes months to recover from. Yes, if we're it, talking right. months, then he's done. And, and it's, 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 you know, you use your shoulders in basketball, yeah. you know? Yes. It's, it's not like, you know, uh, 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 something you don't use. And so uh, this is a big blow. Uh, we had on uh, the other day uh, Chris Mannix of SI mm-hmm. talking about it, and he talked about just how devastating an injury this is for Sacramento, not just from the production standpoint, but Kevin Herter does so many other things that doesn't show up in the box score, the floor spacing, you got to hug up on them coming off screens. Our offense is, is, you know, he's a big part of everything we run. And so this is, uh, you know, this is a big injury. Uh, pretty yeah. No matter who you are, uh, any NBA team could use uh shooting. You know shooter. what though? Uh, he has the dislocated shoulder. You ever see football players or on TV shows where dislocation and then you just pop it back I into have, place. Yeah. Don't try that at home. I tried that at home, and it, I think I made it worse. I'm not going to tell the whole injury or what happened because I might get in trouble. Uh, Child Protective Services might come, but uh, somebody in my family had a dislocated finger. I'm like, oh, we'll just pop that back in. 
uh no nah, it didn't work out it, it you know went to the doctor yeah broken finger and so mm -hmm. don't whatever you see on tv that's good advice yes don't don't try it at home man you know it's uh don't play doctor at home because yeah she uh, still gets mad at me she's like dad you broke my finger i'm like no your finger was already broken what are you talking about and so yeah it was uh, yeah are the kings a good shooting team <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on from your yeah, benefit. I'm getting in yeah. for that one. Oh my gosh. Are the Kings a good, you know, we always hear about that. We think that Mike Brown says we're a good shooting team. Are they, especially without Kevin Herter, are they a good shooting team? Because this year they've been an average shooting team. Let's be honest. Are, you want me to answer that now? Yeah, yeah. Are they a good are the Kings a good they're shooting okay. team? Okay. They have their moments. You know, last year they were pretty good, huh? This yeah. year they're well, the problem with the Kings this year when it comes to shooting is. They've been wildly inconsistent with their shooting. One minute, it's like 17 threes, the next eight, you know? And so I don't know if they have the potential to be a good shooting team. Yes. Last year, they were a good shooting I agree. Team. You know, this year? At times, they have been. They have, yeah, times. exactly. So if you are sometimes and not others, then overall, you're you're okay. Yeah, yeah. And But, you know, to the Kings, you know, uh, what they have going for themselves and in, in for this is that t you still got to respect their ability to shoot. You know, it's not like all of a sudden you could just lay off guys or go under screens. Like teams know that the Kings have the potential to be a great three point shooting team. And I think they're trying to take that away. I think they shoot the ball better as a team when the ball moves, when they run the offense, when they ran the offense, like they did against Orlando I and mean, Keegan was in rhythm. Uh, Keon was in rhythm. When the ball is moving, they shoot better, in right. my opinion. Well, and that's what your boy Mike Brown always talks about, right? Those spray threes that, that he's love. talking about. <laughs> Dude, from day one, he's been talking about spray threes, but I, I know what he means. And so when the ball is hopping around, when when you know guys are touching the paint, it's much easier, yes. Whitey, to catch and shoot in rhythm. You uh -huh. know? Uh -huh. like, because when you watch these guys practice and warm up, What's happening? A coach is usually passing them the ball. Catch, shoot. They're not, you know, doing 10 dribbles, going into their bag and trying to shoot. What they practice mostly is the catch and shoot three. And, and, and that's a much more efficient shot. And so, yes. When we come back, Vivek publicly addressing Sacramento's Major League Baseball future. Drive guys, Sackdown Sports. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SackdownSports.com. Hi, everyone. It's Emron Pilati, the host of the True Sports Card Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I'm excited about our second location at the Roseville Galleria as True Sports Cards continues our expansion. And to celebrate this day, we're excited to announce that Kevin Herter from the Sacramento Kings will be signing autographs on March 30th at 3 p.m. You can get your tickets for this event right now by going to truesportscards.com, searching Kevin Herter in the search bar and buying your ticket. Limited tickets are available, so please go to the website, truesportscards.com, and get your Kevin Herter tickets right now. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Bradley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling.
Sky's the limit at Sky River Casino in Elk Grove. Enjoy over 80 table games, more than 2,100 slot machines, and our thrilling high limit room. With Sky River rewards that add up and up. And 18 elevated restaurants and bars. There's something for everyone. Visit skyriver.com today. Game of problem call 100 gamblers. Guys, this month only, Revive Men's Health Sacramento offers qualified patients a free supply of ED medication to kickstart their treatment and enhance intimacy. Book your free TJAG exam and consultation today. Call 916-365-4566 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Mato Chevy saves you 8000 off MSRP on every new Silverado LT and RST half-ton diesel in stock after rebates. A Mato Chevy exclusive. See all the truck season savings at MatoChevy.com. Together, let's drive. See dealer for details. Ends for 3024. I just can't control my Coming to the venue at Thunder Valley, March 30th. World One presents The Jacksons with Sister Sled. Tickets available now at the Thunder Valley box office. Ticketmaster.com and WorldOnePresents.com. The Arnold Law Firm has seen how an injury can turn anyone's life upside down. Whether it's a slip and fall, a car accident, or any other kind of injury. For almost 50 years, the Arnold Law Firm has been here to help you through the entire process to protect you and your family. If you are ever injured or in an accident, call the Arnold Law Firm. The Arnold Law Firm, providing real justice for you since 1975. Call 916-777-7777. That's 916-777-7777. This is Kenny and Jerry from Bell Brothers Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Everyone knows that a group of fish is called a school, but did you know a group of giraffes is called a tower? Or how about a murder of crows, a quiver of cobras, a shadow of jaguars, a shiver of sharks, or a zeal of zebras? Wild, huh? So what do you call a group of Bell Brothers plumbers? They don't fit into any of the traditional plumber stereotypes. They're clean and well-dressed. They're on time and courteous. They're well-trained and friendly. They're exactly the kind of people you'd be comfortable and confident to invite into your home. That's why we proudly call them our family of plumbers. If you need a drain cleared or any other plumbing service, we'll send one of the family right over to help you out. Call Bell Brothers at 916-444-1234, or you can find us online at thenosurpriseguys.com. The No Surprise Guys, Bell Brothers. Like, you know, earlier today, I was like, oh, windy and yeah. rainy. And beautiful day for baseball. I yeah, I, I had people I knew uh, who went out there. They said it was a great time, packed house Yeah, out there uh, to see uh, the Giants uh, organization. Our guy, Logan Webb, representing Sacramento, too, said he's uh, got some of his players on board with the Kings now. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a great day out Big there. Big story, com. Logan Webb trying to recruit some of his teammates to become Sacramento Kings fans. It's fine if you want to find. We don't need you. I mean, if you want to gray, but we don't need you, right? <laughs> we're not no. desperate at this point. We're not desperate for fans anymore. Are we, Logan Webb? Are oh. we not? Uh, uh, and okay, I agree with you on that. And we're not, also not desperate for national media attention, right? We could use some. We could use a little bit. Some of our players could use a little bit. Right, okay, okay, all right. All good right. for Logan Webb. I mean, that's good. <laughs> Sticking up for his. Uh, for his team, uh, and we got Vivek sticking up for his city. Now, I don't know where you guys are, Jay, Drapes, dear listener. This whole thing about the A's maybe coming to Sacramento, I guess maybe that's still in play, but it doesn't seem like it's right. going to happen. It doesn't seem like it. It, it seems like they're going to stay in Oakland, right? It, it seems to be looking that way. Nothing's yeah, official, it, but it looks like it's trending that way. Yes, but doesn't mean baseball is dead here in Sacramento. Right, and Sacramento is uh, a great baseball town. And Jake Gadon of uh, CBS 13, 
Uh, he just did a little sit down with Vivek, Vivek Ranadive. Here's Vivek talking about Sacramento's Major League Baseball future. Uh, it's no secret that uh, I'm friends with John Fisher and I've uh, been talking to him uh, about having the A's play here for a few years. Uh, and I've also been in touch with the baseball commissioner uh, about possibly having a major league team here. And if we can make the A's thing happen, and if we can show that, hey, this is an amazing fan base, uh, we're going to have a huge response if we have baseball here. Uh, so in my mind, uh, this should be a mecca for sports. Uh, it should be soccer. It should be baseball. It should be women's volleyball. Uh, it should be a whole range of sports. How confident are you that that, that can happen in the next 10 years, though? I don't see any reason why that can't happen. Uh, certainly, uh, we have the community, we have the fan base. Uh, we've uh, got a track record of doing what we say we're going to do. We said we were going to do this. We were going to build an arena. We were going to sell games out. We were going to make it a successful business. Uh, we've done all that. Uh, so I think uh, we just have to keep moving forward uh, and just working hard, and I think it will happen. Vivek Ranadive with Jake got on from uh, CBS 13 here in Sacramento. So interesting. Vivek laid it out there. Hey, if we can make this thing happen in Sacramento with the A's and then show Major League Baseball what we can bring to the party, why wouldn't they give us a team? I, I 100% agree. And I like Vivek's big picture thinking. You know, it's he's trying to elevate the city of Sacramento, this region. Why can't we become a destination? Why can't we become a uh, Los Angeles, a uh, San Francisco, a, you know, a, 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 a Pittsburgh, even like look at Pittsburgh and, and the teams that they have. Think about it. They got multiple teams, everything except basketball, but they got three professional uh, teams there, you know, Philadelphia. And so I, I like the, the big picture uh, thinking it's not small minded and the fact that he said, I don't see why an MLB team can't be here in the next 10 years, that's that's kind of encouraging to me. That It, it sounds like from his discussions mm -hmm. that Major League Baseball might be open to Sacramento in the, near, in the future. I can give you a few reasons why, you know, that probably wouldn't happen. I'm with you. It's great to have somebody championing our cause and just thinking in those terms. You know, the Kings wouldn't be here if it weren't for – Greg Lukenville, right, right. Uh, who just had that vision. And then, of course, he and his partners like, well, let's do that. At a time when Sacramento, NBA, that doesn't make yeah, any right. sense. Yeah. They made it happen. So it's great to have Avec talking about that. We obviously we don't have a stadium, and then we're so close to the Bay Area. That's probably Sacramento's biggest issue when it comes to Major League Sports is we're so close to the Bay Area. Like if, uh, if the A's leave there and baseball looks at, do we go Sacramento or do we go back to Oakland? I mean, it's, it's tough to compete. It gets a much larger market right down the street. Yeah, but when you look at it, you had San Francisco, the Giants, and the A's right there. Why can't this part of Northern California, extending up into Oregon, be the Sacramento be team? You know right, what I mean? Right. And I know it's it, it's it's a long shot when you look at Portland, who wants a team. Uh, Nashville, Nashville, yeah, Austin, Texas, you know, right, you, you right. got all these cities, Montreal, Montreal, Louisville, you know, all these cities that, that want a team, but you need somebody like Vivek, like a Greg Luke and Bill, yeah, that is going to champion for your city. No question. And I love the fact that Vivek, former uh, co owner of the Warriors, is trying to put Sacramento on the map, buying the River Cats trying to get an MLS team here. He mentioned women's volleyball. And then we talked about this last week or a couple of weeks ago. Professional sports really defines your city. When you look at the major cities in America, they all have professional sports. You talked about, it. do you want to become Hartford? Or do you want to become, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just think, you know, you go back to 1985 before the Kings got here and people were like basketball, Sacramento, you're always going to have those naysayers, those doubters. But if you build it, they will come right is, and it, and it may not happen in five years, 10 years. 
and it may take some time to get off, off the ground, but having another professional sports team can transform the city of Sacramento. To me, the whole key to what he said there was the notion that if we can prove, if we can get the ace here and show Major League Baseball what Sacramento can do, because Sacramento's at a huge disadvantage to some of those other cities, in my opinion, just by virtue of the fact that they have a head start on us. But if we could have the A's for a few years, that's an advantage that none of those other cities have. The chance to, all right, they're yours for an extended period. Show us what you can do. I, I, I go back to Oklahoma City when it comes to the yeah, NBA. You're right. You know, they, they were able to get, with the, at the time, the New Orleans Hornets to play there in Oklahoma City, and the fan base rallied around it, built them a stadium, and then you had an owner in Clay Bennett Bought the Sonics, moved them uh, to to uh, Oklahoma City. We already have an ownership group here. We have a guy like Vivek already here. What's that next team outside of Oakland that might be on the move? Mm -hmm. You know, is it Kansas City? Is it Milwaukee? I don't know, but I, I like the conversation. The fact that we're having these conversations, I, I love it. It definitely moves things in the right direction. Yeah. How much, we don't know, but it definitely moves them in the right direction. And then as far as the A's in Sacramento, I think, as we all are as baseball fans with a lot of the things having to do with this A's potential move, we just have to sit back and wait and see where it goes from here. So yeah. the talks with Oakland, where does that go? How quickly does do things come together in Vegas? We just have to wait. Right. And, at and, least we're there and we're ready. But, we but here's the thing too, that Sacramento has going for it. If I'm correct at last check, they were 20th. We're the 20th largest media market. And so it's not like we're a podunk town or anything like we can pull in fans the fan infrastructure isn't the problem it's the corporate support you know do we need to get more corp co companies here but from a fan's perspective we are large enough to support a major league baseball team. yeah the tricky thing about that to me and i could be wrong mm -hmm. but i believe when we call jay if i if you if I'm wrong here, if you know better, please correct me. My understanding is when they talk about Sacramento as the 20th largest TV market, you're also including Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto. Correct. Okay, that's one TV market. Yeah. But those are, you know, we're not like that close together. But close enough, area. though. But close yeah. enough, though, right? Yeah. I mean, Stockton, just a short drive down I-5. You know, it's it's right there. Any other reason why I should go down to Stockton? <laughs> go see my five first right. ever yeah. taking bids of course. Just a yeah. short, short drive short down I-5. Wearing that Alsco yes, uniform. Right, it includes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, you're right. But I, I, I do think, you know, we support the Kings. This place is banged out, packed out. Uh, you know, you look at a city like, I look at the proximity of New York and Boston, uh, let's say. They sort of split it in half and draw Connecticut in half. Why can't we have the Stockton, have the Modesto, uh, go on out, you know, like I said, up to Oregon. And so I think, there's a, yeah, I, I think there's enough room here for us to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So this would be a great opportunity. We'll yes. see where it goes. I still think they're going to stay in Oakland. I think right. that's the smartest thing for them, too. Yeah, smartest thing. And, you know, from a city standpoint. And I mean before they move. I'm not yeah, saying, not, I not wish they right. Yes, yes. And from a city standpoint, uh, I think having them move to Sacramento, that, no. Nah. Uh, and I get it. You heard feelings and everything. And you're upset, but they're still the Oakland A's. Uh, we have some interesting information. Kyle Draper with some interesting information on a breaking news involving an NBA betting investigation. Yeah. Uh, we've got that for you when we return to the Gold One Center, Sacktown Sports. Keegan Murray plays here. Keegan scores another three pointer. Keegan Murray knocking it down for 23 points. Match the Aaron Fox for game scoring honors. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American made favorites like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties. 
or spacious new explorers and expeditions. Plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco sports all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford right here in Sacramento. You can buy any new Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. It's a mystery where Old Spice finds its amazing scents like Himalayan sea salt, but I'm thrilled they have because no other body wash exfoliates and moisturizes 24-7 like Old Spice Gentleman's Himalayan sea salt body wash. Now, if only there was a mountain range separating the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau where I could hide my Old Spice and keep my family from stealing it, my impossibly smooth skin will finally be safe. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. At Ashton or Price, over the last 25 years, we've won just about every injury case you can think of. Slip and fall, falling merchandise, fell through rotted decking, we won those. Dangerous stairs, falls into holes, dog bites, won them. Injured while pedestrian or on a bicycle, auto, motorcycle, big rig, company vehicle, Uber, or Lyft accident, we've won them all. And the best news is there's no fee until you win. So no matter how you got injured. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. The weather's warming up. Spring is here. And so is road trip season. And if you're saying, yeah, sure, I would love to load everything up in my car and hit the road and go on a long road trip. But I don't trust my car. It's not dependable. Well, then go see my friends at El Gro Kia. They'll get you into something dependable and super affordable, like a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for $19,988. Yep, at a time when the average new car price is over $48,000, El Grove Kia can get you into a brand new car for less than half of that. This car's loaded with automatic transmission and eight inch touchscreen with rear camera. It's got advanced driver assistance system, so it's got tech and safety. And again, this brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS can be yours for only $19,988. Only at the number one Sacramento Kia dealer, El Grove Kia and the El Grove Auto Mall and online at elkgrovekia.com. El Grove Kia sale price, $20,738. Kia rebate, $750. Net price, $19,988. One at this price, stock number GK9219. Expires March 31st, 2024. Your home for Kings basketball for over 25 seasons. Sacktown Sports. Get a chance. We'd love for you to join us tomorrow. We'll be doing our show from near the arena. We'll be doing our show. Drive guys coming in tomorrow from Beach Deli. Just yeah, uh, right outside of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to that, man. It'll be our first live show. Uh, be able to interact with the fans and uh, the viewers. And uh, I got two tickets. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with for Friday's game Ooh. against Dallas. Depending on the interest in the crowd. Uh, that wow. shows up. Uh, I might give them away. I've been holding them, sitting on them, trying uh-huh. to figure out what to do with them. And so uh, that's a monster game come Friday against Dallas. I got two tickets uh, right here on my trusty app right here. Nice. That, uh, yeah. Give out. yeah. Yeah. Uh, among other things, we can talk trade with some of our uh, some of our listeners here. We have on the chat already today here. Pike 916. Sasha for, for Kuminga straight up. Question mark. He said Kaminga. Yeah, he does say he says, Hey, I'm just dreaming. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> dang, is that what we're doing? Hey, we're still waiting to see if Sasha plays tonight. Listen, that's questionable once again. Uh, we also have from Baby Cake Sasha for Moses Moody. Why would the Golden State do that? They don't seem to appreciate Moses Moody. I don't they know. They really don't. Yeah. I mean, and he's been a good soldier, you know. Like, if I'm him, I'm like, Get me out of here. Somewhere where I can play. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, go and make my mark. Especially the Warriors aren't even winning. It'd be different if you're competing for a championship. 
But those days are long and gone, done. Uh, speaking of Sasha, you know, we just found out that uh, Nemanja Bjelica is retired. Uh, yes. So, you know, I'm wondering if there's still a chance that Sasha can follow his career arc and he have a better career than Nemanja Bjelica. But before we get to that, Drapes, I know that you had a very interesting uh, note here, breaking news today on an NBA gambling investigation. Yeah, this is something Woj just reported mm. and wrote for uh, ESPN. Uh, Toronto Raptors forward Jonte Porter is under investigation by the NBA following multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months. According to Woj, at issue are the prop bets involving Porter from a game in January and a game in March. The game January was against the Clippers, and the prop bets for that night were at 5.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists. There was also an over-under for Porter's made threes, which was .5. Well, Porter just played in four minutes in that game, leaving the game because of what they said was an eye injury. Well, then in March against Phoenix, his numbers were at 7.5 and 5.5. The next day, DraftKings Sportsbook, and these are two uh, prop bets uh, from two dates, DraftKings Sportsbooks reported to its users that Porter's prop bets were the number one money maker from the night in the NBA. So the first one back in January uh -huh. 26, he hit the it was the under. The most the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player props. A lot of people don't even know who John T. Porter is. He's so Michael is, Porter's brother. Yeah, Michael Porter's brother, but uh, younger brother. But why is that much action coming in on him? And so that's the irregularities that, uh, you know, is creeping up. And so this is a slippery slope we got going on right here. Right now. Yeah, the player props are interesting. I mean, it's not unusual to just be hanging out with media members before a game and they're going over all the, you know, right. player props. Um, so are we thinking here that this is a situation where he's given some kind of inside information to uh, a lot of people or he's somehow involved in these efforts to make money off? I mean, this could go a lot of different ways. This guy's a four hundred fifty thousand dollar rookie, right? When you just take the under all the time on him, and you're going to win. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> but am I wrong? No, no take you, the you, under. No, you you are wrong, Whitey, because because a couple of nights after that uh, Clippers game, I got the uh, Porter played nineteen minutes two oh, days later, okay. and had twelve points with seven rebounds and three assists. Okay, so come on, but but this is uh, man, I I'm not a fan of these organizations talking about nba nfl getting in bed with sports gambling too late though right it's too late but i'm i'm not a fan of this jonte porter reportedly makes four hundred and fifty thousand dollars this year a rookie a two-way player but this raises all kinds of questions a and and, and i don't want to you know accuse anybody but well, you're you're just talking about the questions, yeah, the questions. that's all yeah fair. We're just, i'm just exactly was, is Jonte Porter himself involved? Is it trainers? Is it the coaching? Like there, and, and so it's a slippery slope right here, man. And we're just talking about Shohei Otani, and it's uh, you know, it. it I, I just don't like the way it's going in sports right now. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier. For those who maybe didn't get a chance to hear, Shohei basically today issued a statement and said, "I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have anything to do with this." Uh, uh, bookmaker, I have not been betting and I have not been on baseball. So Shohei today was just like, I didn't know anything about it. That's right. his stance. As far as this goes, um, the, the problem is, Kyle, as anyone who's ever followed any of this knows, for years, especially in baseball, because they had the Black Sox scandal yep. in 1919, it's like, no gambling whatsoever. Nothing. There's right. no yeah. connection to gambling. Because if people don't believe the games are on the level, what do we have? And now, I mean, you've got a team in Vegas, lots of teams in Vegas, and you've got all these affiliations with um, with uh, sports books. The pro sports leagues have decided, well, the money that we're getting is is more important right. than any shadows that might be cast over our credibility. And besides, we can we can keep a lid on it anyway. Right. That's, right. that's well, we can prevent our players from gambling. So, yeah, once once that genie's out of the bottle, though, right. you can't put it back in. 
no, you can't. And, you know, our, our guy Compio uh, weighing in on YouTube says uh, sports uh, gambling, gambling will be the downfall of competitive sports. And so he brought up Temple University. There are some, you know, questions about their basketball program and the unusual amount of activity that's coming in. Like, think about it. John Tay Porter, the largest money maker on two days, uh, two separate days in the NBA on that given night. Like, who's coming in with that kind of cash, mm -hmm. you know, on John Tay Porter? It, it raises a red flag big time. Show his interpreter, maybe? See? <laughs> maybe that's the <laughs> millions that he put down in question, right? Uh, but, yeah, I, I just it, it just stinks, man. It just reeks. Uh, I don't want any part of it. And, and as an NBA employee, I can't, you know, we go through training every year about what you can and can't say and well, remember, but to your point, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but Chuck Swirsky down here a couple of games yeah. ago, he says some joke about, oh, I'll bet you pizza. And he goes, oh, I can't. Right, you can't. I can't do that. I'm just kidding. I can't say that. It, anything related to NBA embedding, no bueno. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, even, like, a tip on, you know, oh, this guy is going to play. If somebody asks you, like, you got to really tread lightly on what you say. How can leagues think, though, that they realistically can keep their players from gambling when, you know, that's the target for a lot of sports gambling, right, is the young men who are in right. your yeah. pro leagues, If other than I'm not talking about the women's leagues, obviously. That's the target. And then you've got all this, um, you've got all these affiliations with them, and somehow you think that, oh, well, we'll have a few meetings here or there, and we'll tell them not to do it, and they won't do it. It's, it impossible right like right and, it's just and, not realistic not realistic some people you know may follow the rules but it, it's and it's in your face now tyrese halliburton had an interesting comment what was it last week or a couple of weeks ago he feels like people don't even care about whether he wins or loses or but does he hit his numbers mm -hmm. for betters and it's i didn't think I, and i was naive about five years ago Somebody was telling me, uh, you know, when I was in Boston, that sports betting is the future. And I'm like, why? Like, I, I just don't see it. But now there's so much money in it. Yeah. You know, there's media networks, careers being made. And it's uh, it's a massive thing. But haven't they? I don't know the answer to this, but haven't they had betting on football in Europe for years? And I mean, they've been able to for the most part, to avoid any major betting scandals. Right. I think I, I think haven't they been yeah. doing that for so, it, let, let, so is this Jonte Porter situation? Is this Shohei situation? How massive is it? Like, how much of a problem do you think this really is? Then, is it just a, a one person? I, I think that the issue comes with, you know, you have a situation like the Jonte Porter situation. I'm just, you know, speculating here that in the future, some like if a player can control the outcome of bets. That's right. I mean, it's who was it? A, 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 what basketball player was that in college? Was it Minnesota or well, Arizona State? Arizona State had a major scandal back in the day, and they threw the book at that uh, program. It's I, I get it. A lot of people gamble. I gamble not on sports really, but I gamble, you know, in other aspects. But man, I, I just don't like it. Well, you know, there are some that will tell you that. Uh, one of the greatest players ever to play never really went away to play baseball. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. That, that's the, uh, yeah, that's you the know speculation. Yeah, I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. Uh, more on that when we come back. Also, I'll tell you about the Kings, how they seek to turn around a very troubling trend tonight to drive guys from the Goldman Center sack down. Sports! On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. Hey, we're David and Greg Figueroa, founders of Melinda's Hot Sauce. Sometimes brand testimonials feel, well, unbelievable. So, we have a fresh take. Tasty Monials. Comments from real people on the internet who love Melinda's balance of hot meat and fresh, flavorful ingredients. At 2021 Do Work says, legendary. <laughs> Nobody does it better. What was that? Sounds for fire emoji, touchdown emoji, and 100% emoji. Okay. At Snack Food Mafia says, I love how they are a thicker hot sauce and not some watery junk. Love it. At Mushroom writes, best hot sauce west of the Mississippi, also the best hot sauce east of the Mississippi. Pro tip, that's the whole United States. 
finally, at IGP1 always says, smack so f- hard. We love to hear that as much as the FCC. Set your mouth on flavor with Melinda's Hot Sauces. Find them at your local retailer or online at melindas.com. That's M-E-L-I-N-D-A-S dot com. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abvi. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event is on. It's time to hit the road with powerful performance and fewer fill-ups. Toyota has more hybrid and plug-in hybrid options than any other brand with the same legendary dependability you can count on. Right now, get incredible 0% APR financing for 72 months or choose a low lease on the all-electric 2023 BZ4X. Hurry in. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event ends soon. Toyota, let's go places. Offer available through TFS to buyers with premium rated credit ends 4124. Discover your dream home at Subcontractors United, your source for all home improvement needs. A talented team of home services experts is ready to make your projects a breeze. No more endless internet searches. Find your contractors in one place place. Enjoy stress-free service absolutely free with no hidden costs and no account to set up. Transform your living space into something extraordinary. Visit Subcontractors United today and experience the joy of hassle-free home improvement. Dream big at subcontractorsunited.com. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art Support could be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are going to function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Welcome to the March Mania sales event at Kia of Vacaville. Get ready for an extraordinary showcase of our 2024 vehicle lineup. Experience the latest in cutting-edge technology, innovative features, and the sleek Kia design that defines excellence. During March Mania, we're excited to offer unbeatable lease options on our top models. Step into the future with the all-new Kia Sportage, where captivating design meets exhilarating performance. Explore the remarkable fuel efficiency of the Kia Nero, a hybrid marvel that extends your journey with every mile. Discover the luxury and versatility of the Kia Telluride, seamlessly blending sophistication with practicality. Don't miss our eco-friendly Kia hybrid options, perfect for those who prioritize efficiency without compromising on style. And with the EV9 in stock, Kia of Vacaville is your destination for electric excitement. Visit us today during March Mania and take advantage of exclusive lease deals and special offers. Model availability, lease options, and features may vary. Please visit the Kia of Vacaville for more details. KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX. HD2 Sacramento. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, your flagship station for the Beam Team. Can we light the beam? Light the beam, baby. Shutdown Sports. The only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports.
Only 12 games left for the Kings in the regular season. They start the five-game homestand tonight. How many times are we going to be lighting the beam on this homestand, Drapes? Five? Five-game homestand? Yeah. Five? Clippers, the last game of that homestand, if I'm correct? Yes. Philadelphia, Dallas twice, Utah, and the Clippers. Yeah, I'm going to say five. There Clippers go. got some issues. You know, Kings understand what's at stake against the Mavs. 5-0 and oh on this homestand. What's up, James? What's up, baby? <laughs> Dog, we on the air. <laughs> That's okay, Jake. We you on the air. You don't owe me any popcorn. All good. Yeah. We on the yeah. air. <laughs> no. Is he? Tonight? Adam Silver's in the building. Ooh. That's why I came right to you, man. Oh, thanks. NBA commissioner Adam Silver's here. All right. Can we get him on? Yeah. Can you ask him to come on, James? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Adam Silver. I thought he'd be here tomorrow night for sure. Right. National TV. Maybe he's going back to back. Maybe he's going back to back. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Man. Breaking news. He's probably, I, I thought he'd keep a low profile with this Jonte Porter story that just came out. Like, right. He probably didn't know about that. Right. He got yeah. it. like, ah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, five times, huh? We, we, we know the Kings have opportunities here. They certainly have one tonight against the Philadelphia team. That, let's face it. Even though Philadelphia... Uh, they beat the Stuffins out of the Kings earlier this year, but Philadelphia is only four and seven in their last 11. And even though they won yesterday, tonight will be their third game in four days. So golden opportunity for the Kings. But here's the thing, uh, Grapes. Uh -oh. As we discussed earlier, first game back from a trip mm. for the Kings. They are two and five. So in the seven games they played, Coming back home after a road trip, they're two and five. Those five losses, Detroit, Charlotte, Miami, Indiana, and the Chicago Bulls. So that's the trend the Kings have to set on its ear with authority tonight. Yeah, it's um that's 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 messed up, man, because you would think like I want to be hopeful. I want to feel good. I'm like, yeah, our boys got it. We, I'm not worried about tonight. But you just mentioned two and five uh, and, and some of the teams that we lost to at that. And so on paper, I say, yeah, we got this, but I don't know what to expect tonight. You know, I didn't expect them to go to Washington and get handled like that. And so, you know, as, as a Kings fan, I'm like optimistic. I'm hopeful, mm -hmm. but I'm, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be objective. Obviously, there's some fan optimism creeping in, but I think looking at it objectively, here's why I think the Kings have a chance to put all that behind them starting tonight. My feeling was one of the reasons the Kings have been so inconsistent all year. Just one of the reasons. There's lots of reasons. But defensively, they've been all over the place, right? right. For the most part, it hasn't been good. The defense has been noticeably better of late. Yeah, they've been playing better defense overall, and Keon Ellis has made he's made a very significant difference defensively. If you play better defense, you're going to be more consistent, and I think the Kings from here have a chance to be more consistent starting with tonight because they're doing a better job of keeping teams from driving right past the perimeter players and get right into the painted area. Yes, it, they are. You know, throughout the Wizards game, second night of a back to back, they were you know they just weren't there that night. You're right. Since, you know, Keon's been in there since the All-Star break, they've improved. And, you know, before the start of the season, what do we want from the Kings defense? Brady? We told, you know, Kings fans, if this team could just be middle of the pack defensively. Right. What's their defensive rating right now? I don't know. 15. 15, 15. I think. Dead smack <laughs> in the middle. Uh, that's all yeah. we asked of them, right? Right. And, and, and so they're delivering on that. And so. I give, like you said, your boy Keon Ellis, I give him a lot of credit for that because I liken it to uh, being a parent. You tell your kids, do this, do this, do this, and, and they just don't get it. But then you get somebody from the outside or a different voice, if you will, and shows them how it's done, and then bam, it clicks. I feel like Keon sort of showed, was a, a tangible visual representation of this is how I want you to play. And I think other guys have picked up on that. I know there have been videos on Twitter just detailing what he does. It's so amazing. Can you take us through some of the things, some of the reasons why we all know that, right. all right, he's out there and he guards his man and they're better defensively. But what is he doing specifically that's helping this defense right now? Well, first of all, he's getting his hands on everything, you know, just his deflections. 
uh, since being in, in, in the rotation has been tremendous. And this was something, you know, I talked to Keon uh, about the other day after the Toronto game uh, in, in which he was huge in that as well. You know, his mindset defensively, and he broke it down like this. He said, what I try to do is envision an offensive play how I would run it. And so let's say I'm running a pick and roll or the screen and pop or whatever. Like, because I know how I would run that play, I sort of anticipate how the other, you know, maybe it's a little guessing or, you know, but basketball is a simple sport. It's not like, you know, any offenses are reinventing the wheel. Most teams do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's anticipating what he thinks the offensive player will do. And so he's getting tons of deflections. You know, that's his thing, you know, and, and, and I'm looking very at, active hands. Yes, very active hands. And so I, I got this note here. He was moved into the starting lineup March 12th. Since then, 16 steals, nine blocks, third most steals in the NBA in that span. Wow. Think about that. This is Keon Ellis. So you know who he's behind? De'Aaron Fox, Fox and DeJounte Murray. Think about it. So you're starting backcourt of Fox and Keon Ellis. And the steals that they are getting, just uh, unbelievable. And so, no, man, it's – uh he's – and the thing I also mentioned about him, he doesn't take plays off. He is always engaged. Relentless. Yes, he is always into it. It's not like, you know, outside of that one play against Brunson where, you know, he turned his head and Brunson, he's locked in for the most part. And I, I think that's something, you know, and, and this is something me and Jay – you know, talked about last week with uh, High Flyer, I believe, as well. And, and I think I was on with you, too, as well. It's, you know, in an NBA game, full 48 and everything, guys don't always give 100%. Well, That's Keon, what Henry was saying. Yeah, yeah. but Keon is, is pretty close to that. Like, yeah. he's locked in. Even that play that you just talked about where he turned his head and Brunson went by him, he wasn't, it wasn't like he lost his focus. Right. It wasn't like that. He was daydreaming. He was looking for the screen. screen. Right. Yeah. And you could argue, all right, if there's better communication there, he didn't have to look for the screen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you you know how it is. You talk to guys in the NBA and they tell you, yeah, you don't always get those screens don't always get (laughs) called out. It's just, it's just not the way it works. But I think if you're a basketball fan over the years, you see guys that get a lot of steals. Sometimes guys get steals because they take chances. They overplay the passing lanes. Sometimes you can get some steals without playing good defense. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do that. No, that's not him. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I I, I look at, I, I think steals is a very interesting category just because of what you said. You can get steals by gambling. Right. But that's not the best defensive principle. Right. Like, because you're, yeah, you're out of position. Yeah, because you're out of position. Yeah. And so, no, it's that's not what he does, Keon. Like he's solid. I think he just has cat like quickness. His reach is, is, is tremendous. He he's, he's been a difference maker, man. Now I know that we played this Thursday when you weren't in, and I know it's been, this was after the, uh, uh, one of the wins last week where he was especially impressive. Did you hear what Mike Brown said about him? No. Last, what, what? Okay. Maybe we can find that audio. It's incredible because he talks about Keon Ellis in terms of trying to compare him to other players he's seen. And he says, I, I'm at a loss. It's really? incredible. Yeah. He says, I don't know if I've seen anybody quite like it. We'll have to see if we can find that. Okay. Again, it's from last Wednesday, I think. But Mike Brown is just like, he, <laughs> it's almost like, hold on. Are you going, are you, are you pushed a little too far? But I think he's genuine when he talks about Keon Ellis and has a hard time right. coming up with a comp for all the great players he's coached. Keon is bringing something that to Mike Brown, either he hasn't, didn't expect or has never seen before. Yeah. That's incredible. Incredible. And we're talking a second year player too. Let's not, you know, it's not no savvy five year, 10 year veteran. This is a guy still learning basketball, still learning the game. And he brings so many intangibles to the floor. Sure. He's getting the steals, but the deflections, which don't show up in the regular box score, the disruption, if you will. And so it was after the Toronto game. I think it was right after the okay, Toronto game. Okay. Just gushing about him. Yep. Yeah. And so, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this matchup tonight. I, I imagine he's going to be on Tyrese Maxey, mm-hmm. you know, one of the best guards in the league. So that, it should be a fun one. Uh, when we come back, another coach is complaining about the Lakers' foul, <laughs> foul advantage. <laughs> and we say bye-bye to Bielitsa and wonder if uh, Sasha can do uh, what Belly did before he 
retired as the drive guys roll on from the goal one center on Sacktown Sports. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year, coach of the year, clutch player of the year, all-stars and all NBA performers. Plus, we got to light the beat. Here's a steal by Fox, the breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team, Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Hey, it's Carmichael Day for my good friends at American Energy. Now, I've told you this before, but this is what we call extending a good deal right now. American Energy Heat and Air is offering an HVAC diagnostic for $99. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Never mind. They're offering it free. It's a $99 value, but you get it for zero. Let the American Energy team test your system connections and all the moving parts of that system to ensure that it's functioning properly. Now, this is a limited time offer. Expires March 31st. Call today to schedule your appointment at 916-520-9990. Speak to the company that has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau that's been making the greater Sacramento area proud since 1981. 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Tell them Carmichael Dave sent you. Call 916-520-9990 now. is the Lakers getting to the line more than other teams. Now, John Hollinger made a good point today on Twitter, Drapes. He pointed out that it's not the official's job to try to make sure each team should the same number. Right, yeah. That's not not what they're supposed to be doing. One team gets fouled more than that team's going to shoot more free throws. But Rick Carlisle, Mm. on the loss to the Lakers, it was, well, what, 150, 145? Yes. He says, quote, there were certain things that were impossible to overcome, the 27 free throw differential is one and the 17 foul differential is the other. Right. And I'll leave it at that and quote 150 to 145. The final, the Lakers from the foul line, 38 of 43, the Pacers nine of 16, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there were five fouls called on the Lakers in the entire second half. And I think 17, we're on the uh, Pacers. Yeah, He's here, right? <laughs> right. We got to talk about this. Why do you think that is, Whitey? Why, why do you think that is? Like, uh, I don't think there's a league-wide conspiracy to benefit the Lakers. Why do you think that is, though? I, I can't explain it. I think that a lot of it has to do with the fact that you remember when Shaq played? Yep. Shaq's really hard to officiate, right? Yeah. yeah. LeBron, I think, is similar. I think he's hard to officiate, as big as he is. I think he and Anthony Davis are two guys that are going to draw a lot of fouls the way they play. Subscribe. I think uh, I agree. I think, uh, you know, Country Mama is a guy that is pretty good at hunting fouls. So you have that, and I think that's legitimate. <laughs> Country Mamba. Is that, is, is that what we're calling him now? <laughs> I will call him that forever. But I, I do think that, uh, I mean, it's hard. To get beyond whether it's conscious or unconscious, I think, I think the Lakers tend to get a favorable whistle. I mean, I've, we've seen it. Yeah, right. I, I'm looking at the numbers from last night. The Pacers, as a team, shot 16 free throws. Yeah, they Austin were nine Reeves to himself shot yeah. 12. <laughs> like, yeah, it's um, I don't I don't know how to explain it, man. And it's you know, and and I was listening to the morning show, and you know, those guys were talking about how. Since the start of last season, including the playoffs, the Lakers have taken a thousand more free throws than their opponents. Like, I I just that is it's hard to explain because it's not like they penetrate more or get to the basket more. It's not like they got wilt out there and teams are just hacking them and fouling them. Um, I I don't know what it is, man. And it's it's one of those stats that if you're an NBA uh, uh, representative, it's like. Ooh, this is not a good look, especially coming from here from Sacramento. It's like, see, yeah. we told you, we knew it. You know, 
And so uh, it's that's that's unbelievable. I I do think that as a team, they do a good job of getting to the line. I don't know that that fully explains yeah. everything. When you go back to the coach of the Raptors, when he went berserk this year. Yes. Um, Darko, yes. Yeah. And again, it's one thing for coaches to complain, but for a coach to complain the way he complained, you know, the league will never publicly address right. it, but it's something they might want to look at. Because it's also bad for the league if you have this perception, whether it's true or not. If you have this perception that the Lakers are getting favorable whistles, especially in this day and age when we're talking about, you know, backup centers on the Raptors and their relations to the prop betting, it's something the league needs to make sure they have buttoned up. Yeah, but, you know, it's interesting, Whitey. I'm looking at the the, the free throw attempts per um, per each player, individual league leaders. Yeah. Anthony Davis is 13th in the NBA in free throw attempts per game. LeBron James, 25th. Hmm. Okay. So the Lakers got two of the top 25 guys on their list. I'll bet you other somebody else. I don't know. Milwaukee, meanwhile, has two of the top nine in hmm. Dame and Giannis. And uh-huh. so I don't think it's the stars that are getting the preferential treatment. Hmm. Maybe it's the, the what you call them again? Uh Country, country mamba, mamba uh, you know, uh, <laughs> country mamba, like the, 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 you know, role players getting more because I'm looking at it and I'm talking about free throw attempts per game. Country mamba isn't even in the top 50 mm. in free. So I don't understand how the Lakers are getting this many more free throws than their opponents. Wow. They only got two guys in the top 50. And free throw attempts. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. How many did LeBron shoot last night? Do you know? And I know you just had it up there not to send you scramble. No, I got it right here. LeBron James last night. uh, Shoot, of course, I just closed out on on that, but I'll I'll get it up real quickly. But Country Mamba, your boy, (laughs) took 12. Uh, I would imagine Anthony Davis uh, lived at the line as well in last night's game. Pulling it up right now. Here we go. So LeBron last night from the free throw line took eight. Huh. Dinwiddie nine. Reeves 12. Anthony Davis five. See what I mean? Yeah. So LeBron and AD combined for 13 free throw attempts. Country Mamba at 12 himself. Wow. So I don't think it's LeBron and AD that's getting the whistle. I think it's the, the role players. Okay. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yes, it is definitely uh, something to keep an eye on going forward. Maybe that's just uh, the way it is. That's the nature of pro basketball. Mm-hmm. I, and we do. I, I'm not discounting the the notion that the Lakers are actually earning those trips. I don't know that I'm buying that, but I'm just trying <laughs> to keep an open mind, you know, because I don't want to be just a blithering, uh, slobbering, foaming at the mouth. Oh, the Lakers, right, Lakers, right. Link, Link, for the Lakers. Um, I want to get back to what we were just talking about because Jay found. The audio, Mike Brown talking about Keon. Okay. Uh, Keon Ellis. I think this is one of the most incredible things I've ever heard Mike Brown say. And again, you may have heard this already because this was after Wednesday and the Kings beat Toronto. And Mike Brown after the game struggling to find a comparison defensively for Keon Ellis. Here it is. I was talking to one of my coaches a couple of days ago and I was trying to figure out who he reminds me of defensively. And I don't. I'm not sure yet. He, his his skill set is unique. He's his arms are a lot longer than what you think. His anticipation and his feel for a young guy, never been around it. Not not for a second year guy that played in the G League his whole first year and got limited minutes so far. I, I, I I've I've been in the league 37 years. And I I can't fully grasp it grasp it because he's so young, but he plays like an old soul, <clears throat> and his feel is like an old soul. But he's probably a little bit quicker than you think, a little bit more athletic than you think. Arms are a little longer than you think, and his feel, anticipation, hands. It's early, but they m- might be second to nobody. I you know I, I'm not sure so. If, it's going to take some time for me to really figure it, figure him out, but he's doing, he's doing a hell of a job for us. Might be second to nobody. Yeah. It, wow. 
yeah, you could tell too, just listening to Mike Brown, just like that was a thought out. It wasn't a, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, like he literally was trying to think, you uh-huh. know, who does he remind me of? And it's, he might be second to none and, and his instincts, man. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And you can tell by the way, he's embarrassed to even say that. It's like, well, right, I, I don't right, know. But- right. Exactly. No, Keon's been uh, a revelation. And like I started out early, like he's found money, you know, it's, he, you know, the Kings didn't make any moves, but their biggest move might have been putting him in the rotation. And uh, he, he's he's may have changed this season around for the Sacramento Kings. There was some Yahoo on the station. I think it might have been me. Oh, Matisse Thibel, right? We were all. Yeah. Yeah. And who else was it? Oh, Caruso. Oh, Caruso. Boy, we Caruso. went it all. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, those guys could have helped. But they got their they guy. They had the guy all right all there the whole time, right? Yeah. And if he can give you some offense, that's that would be major. You know, if he can give you 12 to 15 points per night and play that elite defense as Buddy Heald runs onto the floor as he's getting ready to, to warm up here, old friend, my guy, Disneyland buddy, travel partner, if you wish buddy Hill. A star. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, buddy Hill's out there. But no, if Keon can give you, you know, the, the 37, 38, 39% three point shooting and elite defense, that's what we've been looking for. You got a player. Yes, you got a, a better player. team. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Keith Pompey is going to join us from the Philly Inquirer. We'll get a clearer idea what kind of sixer team the Kings are taking on when he joins us next year from the Golden One Drive Guys Sackdown Sports. Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda, yeah, your one-stop Honda shop. We love the game because anything can happen. There's no sure thing. How did that go in? Every play. Oh, my goodness. Every shot. Are you kidding me? Every swing is a risk if you bet. I can't believe that just happened. There's no easy money. There's no luck. And no one wins all the time. If you bet, bet responsibly. And always set a limit. Learn more at responsibleplay.org. Progressive asks, what do a late night pizza craving? Pizza place. Can I get one large pepperoni pizza? A newly licensed team delivery driver. A guaranteed delivery time or its free offer. And your front fence have in common? Uh oh. It's my fence! They can turn your stomach upside down in under 30 minutes. I'm still getting a tip, right? Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round-the-clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. The good folks at Wendy's have a revolutionary new product for you. Introducing the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. It's like a time machine that takes you all the way back to now, the year 2024. It's the classic creamy, orangey flavor you remember. Dare I say, it's new timey. It's the flavor you grew up with, just all grown up. Head over to your local Wendy's establishment and get yours while supplies last. The new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. Here for the now, for now. Limited time only at participating Wendy's. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. 
I owe the IRS around $57,000 and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments. And after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. At Ashton & Price, we get injury victims to yes. Experience, yes. Ashton & Price has been around for over 25 years. No more insurance companies, yes. Our clients focus on getting better and we handle all the rest. Results, yes. We've collected over $100 million for injury victims. No fee until we win, yes. Our clients pay nothing until we win. Ashton and Price, the best at getting to yes. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com. And please remember to gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Sacktown Sports. Pops in a pop, pops in a pop. We like the girls with the pops in a pop. Pops in a pop, pops in a pop. The Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Before we get to our special guest, real quickly, want to share this with you from Twitter. Greg Wissinger on Twitter: Top five NBA teams in point differential since the All Star break. Al Draper. Number one, Boston Celtics, uh, plus 16.7. Number two, Houston, plus 12.1. Number three, the Pelicans, plus 10.2. Number four, the Sacramento Kings, wow, okay. 7.3. And then plus 6.6, rounding out the top five, the Denver Nuggets. Tonight, the uh, Kings taking on, of course, uh, Kyle Draper's hometown, Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. And uh, why don't you introduce your, your friend here? My, it's my guy. Writes for the Philadelphia Inquirer, covers the Sixers, Philadelphia native as well. Excited to welcome in my guy, Keith Pompey. Pompey, you're on with the drive guys, Drapes and Kevin Gleason. What's going on, man? Hey, Keith. Hey, man. What's going on, y'all? Hey, man, I'm, I need to get your autograph. Kyle read that article. It was a great article, bro. Oh, thank you, fam. You know how it is, man, especially where we come from in Philly, too, man. And, you know, one of the things we talked about on this show, Pompey, and you tell me, you tell me. So people are clowning me, mostly my co-host and and, 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 and maybe the producer here and there, but he's on my side now. So when I was growing up, Pompey, I, uh-huh. I was born in 75. So I was an 80s guy. I was a Magic Johnson fan. So I was a fan of the Lakers. I'm calling it like I see it. That's exactly what it was. But when I left Philly, where I got a little bit older, teenage years, 17, 18, left Philadelphia, I represent Philly wherever I go. So, of course, I must be a Sixers fan. Kevin over here, Whitey is trying to tell me I can't do that. As an eight-year-old, if I choose the Lakers, I got to stick with them my whole life. I'm just saying, Keith, in my opinion, root for whoever you want. But don't come in here telling me that. Sixers are my team, although in 83, I was in tears because they lost. Well, they, well, they Because they beat. They beat. The they Lakers. beat Magic. But yeah. I was eight at the time. Yeah. yeah. He, you, yeah. you settled it. How do you feel nah, about that? No, nah, I, I can't. I'm, I'm, I can't go with this. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I, I can say you saying you you're a Philly fan. No, nah, I can't be. You know why? Because, I'm, and I'm going to change the different sports. I grew up a Giants fan, right? And I'm still a Giants fan. They're the worst team in the NFC for football, right? But at the same time, I'm a Giants fan. If you don't like the Sixers, you don't like the Sixers. Yeah, I mean, but if, when I, but dude, you live in Sacramento and you're a Lakers fan. I mean, you used to be a Lakers fan. No, I'm yeah. not a Lakers fan anymore. That's what I'm saying. It gets really confusing. I, 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 mean, I, I yeah, so that's here's, fighting I, words up there, dude. <laughs> nah, man. See, that this is the problem. 
This is the problem, Keith. And that's why you, you root for your sorry Giants. This is the problem. I I grew up, I liked the Cowboys. But when they got oh Tony Robo, Tony Romo, so you I could not runner, rock with them you're anymore. No, listen. You no, know, you like the Giants. Why, why you are you playing with me? Fan. You like the Giants? <laughs> yeah, I know. Boy, I know, man. but yeah, it's different. But, but <laughs> I like, when, when they got Tony Romo, I said, you know what? I can't rock with them anymore. Yeah, you stick it with the Giants. Good. I'm a player guy. So let me ask you this. Who's your play, favorite player growing up? Lawrence Taylor? Actually, yeah, he he was, but but I also like Harry Carson. I had a um a uncle who went to okay. school with him, so yeah, like yeah, I like Harry. So if Carson. Harry Carson put on a Green Bay Packers uniform, you're not going to root for Harry Carson? He's still not your nah, guy. Nah, I became I became a junkie. <laughs> I was I was man, a you're terrible, Keith, thing. man. I yeah, thought you'd back me up guy. on this, bro. Bro, how I'm can you be a up for Giants fan but not on, and you from Philly? Because it's called choice. <laughs> you get a choice. <laughs> America's a beautiful place, bro. America's a beautiful place. So when you make that choice at eight, nine, and ten, you got to ride or die with that. Huh? You, you got to stick with it. You just can't. Nah, you can change. You can change. You can change. You can't. Yeah, you you can change, but you know it. It is what it is. It's just you know I don't know, man. Like you were a Cowboys fan. You were a Lakers fan. <laughs> You probably was a Yankees fan or the Oakland A's back in the day. You know oh, what I mean? You ever won the Super Bowl, right? And then all of a sudden you went to lose, and you're like, boom. But no, nah, it's funny though because like you know you lived in Boston, you lived all those other places. So you know it is where it is. You my hey, guy, you know that. Got a rep, though, Philly, though. Yeah, I uh, guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Man, I, I, I had guess. you on thinking you'd have my back, bro. Thank you. I do. On other stuff, I would. Yeah. I love the Phillies. You love the Phillies too. Let's rock with the Flyers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. Just bringing some, uh, yeah, some sense to the he, he's proceedings. Killing me. That's all right. Keith, how how tired or how road weary would you say the Sixers are? Given that tonight will be what their third in uh, in fourth day, uh, four days, third game in four days. You know, I, I think they feel a little bit better because they beat the Clippers last night or yesterday afternoon. Um, I, I, you know, believe it or not, like the only best back. They are tired, but at the same time, I think the only better back-to-back -back they would have if they were at home, right? Because, I mean, if you think about it, it was a 12 o'clock game, and then they fly to Sacramento, and then they have a game tonight at 7, 7.30. So, you know what I mean? I don't feel like it's going to be as bad as it could have been for them. You know what I mean? But, but the thing is, you know, I think tonight's going to be a whole lot tougher for him than last night was. Yeah, you, why do you think that, Keith? Because I'm looking at the Clippers. They, they, you know, they, they got a nice little squad. They loaded. Why do you think this will be more difficult? Just because of the back-to-back -back style of play? What, 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 what do you think? Well, I remember the last time that, um, and, and again, it, it happened a long time ago. But the '76ers. Kind of as the kids say, they boat race the sac boat race the Sacramento Kings the last time they played them without Embiid, right? Yeah. Um. I also, when you look at the Clippers, you know, the, when we think of the Clippers, we think of the star power, right? You think of the future Hall of Famers, but they're one in eight in their last nine games against teams with a winning a winning record, and they also have been struggling at home lately, right? And when you come to Sacramento, I, I think that you know Sacramento is a team that's you know, trying to play, get a playoff appearance, right? They're trying to go to the postseason. So it's one of those things that they're going to be hungry. I also think that um, the Sixers basically got their attention, you know, after winning yesterday. And I just think that as a younger team, um, you know, Sabonis is a beast, man. He's like probably the most underrated quality all-star caliber big man in the league, in my opinion. And, and De'Aaron Fox is, is lightning quick. And and I just feel like in the past, the Sixers had success against him, defending him, when Matisse Feibel was on the team. Well, Matisse Feibel isn't there. De'Anthony Melton isn't there. Robert Covington isn't playing. You know what I mean, De'Anthony? So I just feel like right there, there, there are two matchup problems. Two matchup problems. One at the five and another one at, at who's going to um, guard Fox. So... 
I just look at this one as a as a tough matchup for the Sixers. I, I really do. Keith Pompey with us uh, covers the Sixers for the Philadelphia Inquirer. What about specifically Keith that uh, that Maxi matchup for the Kings and how has he handled the added burden since Embiid's injury? You know what, now that's the key thing. You know, Maxi is going to go out there. He's going to get points. You know, I, I think the thing about Maxi is like if you, you guys are going to see it. Um, He's either going to do two, one or two things. He's either going to try to attack from the start or he's going to try to get Tobias Harris and Bob, right? And and that's what happened the last game against the Clippers. But a lot of times what Maxi does is, you know, he, he, he gets his bucket, but the problem is, you know, he hasn't been able to get the team over the hump for the most part because, you know, like he is like a one-man show in the fourth quarter. Teams are adjusting. He's getting tired, and other people haven't been able to step up. But so, like, it's one of those things where I mean, he had three consecutive games of thirty points. Then he had a six-point game. And then he came back with twenty-seven, and then he had twenty-four the last game. But when you look at it, you know they they really struggled in a lot of those games. So you know he's been playing well. But I think for the Seventy Sixers, believe it or not, um, y'all. It's going to be what does Kyle Lowry do? Like, how is Kyle Lowry going to be able to take a lot of the ball handling off of um, Maxi? You know what I mean? So that's going to free him up. Is Kyle going to be able to get um, Tobias Harris involved, Kelly Oubre, you know, things like that? And, um, you know, just to take some of that point guard pressure off of Maxi tonight. Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer joining us. Uh, Keith, you know, when you look at this Sixers team, obviously the loss of Joel Embiid uh, has been massive. But you guys made some trades. You know, you bring in a Buddy mm-hmm. Heald, you get a Kyle Lowry. Uh, how have those guys fit into what Nick Nurse is trying to do? You know, it's, it's weird because they're, they're they're playing a little bit better. Like to be honest with you, I'm gonna be this. Kyle, you know, came in to be the backup, right? The backup. But when he's out there on the floor, it just seems like everything is more crisp. You know, Buddy Hill, you know, he started off strong. And then all of a sudden, now he might be motivated tonight because he's back in Sacramento, but he started off strong. And then all of a sudden, it it just seems like his game just tapered off a little bit. You know what I mean? He just wasn't that guy. Um, Campaign is a guy that they picked up. You know, here's a guy that scored in double figures off the bench in eight of the 16 games that he played off the bench. So he's been a really good fit. But if I'm going to be honest with you, I felt like um, they were better before the off, I mean, excuse me, before they made these trades. Now, again, a lot of that had to do with MB playing and they had tough minded players around them. But it just seems like outside of Kyle and, and Cam giving you buckets, it just seems like the team hasn't really um, meshed well, um, you know, since the all star break. Keith, uh, Buddy Heald has made his last is it six or seven shots now since you've been talking about it. He makes another one. Okay. So for what it's worth, the <laughs> warm-ups obviously unguarded. Well, it's been a while since he's missed. Um, as far as last night goes, and I know Player said all the right things post-game, do you think for any of the Sixers, was it extra satisfying to beat Harden after the way he had forced his way out of Philly or were the players for the most part, or was that to play on for them? Man, hey, come on, man. Like, you, y'all know <laughs> Like deep down inside, yeah, they wanted. He look, Harden, Harden didn't he speak to the media after the game because he was a little salty, and the players was like, "Yeah, we love him," but they were happy because it was a search. Uh-huh. I mean, here's a guy. I mean, they love James, right? They love him, but at the same time, this is a guy that says, "I don't want to play with y'all," you know. And it's not nothing against y'all, but it's against the organization. So, like, yeah, that was a big game, and and the funny thing is, you know, they know that. They play Sacramento tonight. On Wednesday, they're going to play the Clippers in Philly. So it's one of those things where we're not going to say anything bad and to, at least until after we play play them on Wednesday. So, you know, yeah, it was it was one of those things. They really wanted to get this victory. And, and they can say what they want. The coach can say what they want. But it was one of those things where, you know how that was the easiest pregame uh, speech that Nick Nurse gave all season. This guy did not want to play with y'all. 
He did not want to play with y'all. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, they were they were fired up. Yeah, they're excited. Keith, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we're watching Buddy Hill warm up Sacramento. He Tides, finally missed one. He missed one. Okay, yeah, like a all right, footer. all right. He's raining them in right yeah. now, though. Look at him, not, not even hitting uh, rim. I, I, I look at the coaching staff that Nick Nurse has assembled. Our guy Bobby Jackson, who we love, also Rico Hines. Uh, what can mm-hmm. you tell us about those guys, their roles uh, with the team, and how they've been in their first season in, in Philly? You know, I think they've done. I think they've done well. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, like I, I really like his staff. You know, you got Rico. Rico is very well, you know, well respected. You know, he's a bench coach here. Um, you know, Bobby. We all know his playing career. We know that. You know, he was the coach. You know, he, they hired him from. He was the Sacramento Kings D League coach. Before that, he was an assistant. You know, they have a lot of respect. A lot of guys look up to him. You know, and, and Nick, you can see on the game, he's going to them, asking them questions. So I, I really like his staff. And, and, the, and the thing is, not just me, but the players love him. You know, because it's funny because, you know, you have Nick Nurse, a guy who didn't play in a league, but the guys have Bobby. And Bobby's always, you know, you know, talking to him about certain things. So, yeah, he's been a great addition, a great coach. And, and, and you know, a, a bigger than that, you know, he's an even better person that I, I found out. So, yeah, he, he's, he's a great coach and a great, uh, you know, both of them. You know, Rico, the thing about Rico is, is, is good because, you know, he's the guy that has a lot of the players' respect, you know, because he has the open run. You know, he, he does this, he does yeah. that. So, yeah, they're, 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 they're two quality assistants that they have. Keith Pompey, thank you so much for your time, and especially thanks for – as I say, adding a voice of reason to this sprawling fan explanation from Kyle Draper <laughs> that I, you know, I root for this team, but I used to root for that team fan. Now from Please. this town. And so thank you, Keith. We appreciate that very much. Yeah, real quick. Kyle really lost me. At first he said the Lakers, I'm going to give him that. Then he said the Cowboys too. I was like, oh, nah, bro. You just a front runner. <laughs> you just a front runner. <laughs> You, you I love used you to be my guy, you Keith. Front runner, bro. Uh, you my guy, but you a I know, dude. I was oh, eight man. years old, Keith. I was eight. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, that, I'm, I'm hey, you in town right that's now? Bad parodying. That's bad parodying. I know. Uh, nah, I'm just making fun. Yo, you you, you, right, you you at the game tonight? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't make. I, I I came back home for this one, but yeah. So See, we got just Gina Marzell right here. No, no, no. Huh? I had, yeah, I had to hand, bring, but bring, see, I'm doing a, they got me doing the story. So, you know, I mean, it, I'm not doing like the, uh, the story on the LSU coach. So people don't have to worry about that. But, um, oh, the I woman's see. basketball coach, but, but I'm doing the story. So that's why I'm on like on assignment. That's all. That's all. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Keith. All right. Yeah. All right, baby. All right, I see you. Yeah, well, we, all right. We appreciate it. Uh, when we come back, bye bye to Bielitsa. Two things we'll always remember about him. Drive guys next on Sacked Out Sports. The Sacramento Kings five-game homestand begins tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. The push for the postseason is here, and every game is critical. Dribble handoff to Malik. Can he do it again? Pocket pass back to Sabonis. The two-hand hammer. That could be a dagger. It's 115-107. Malik Monk with the assist pass for Damata Sabonis. Listen to all the thrilling moments beginning tonight at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. This is for the men who never settle, the ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie, the type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home, and the men who use PTO to catch afternoon basketball in March with the boys. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Who wants to settle for a single TV? With more TVs, bigger screens, plus our fabulous scenic views, there's more to watch at Twin Peaks. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event is on. Explore California this season with Toyota's legendary reliability. Take on spring with incredible fuel efficiency and more peace of mind. Right now, get low 3.99% APR financing on 2024 Highlander. Or check out great lease deals on the stylish 2024 Camry, Sporty Corolla, and Dynamic RAV4. 
Hurry in. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event ends soon. Toyota, let's go places. Offer available through TFS to buyers with premium rated credit. Excludes hybrids, ends 4124. Discover your dream home at Subcontractors United, your source for all home improvement needs. A talented team of home services experts is ready to make your projects a breeze. No more endless internet searches. Find your contractors in one place. Enjoy stress-free service absolutely free with no hidden costs and no accounts to set up. Transform your living space into something extraordinary. Visit Subcontractors United today and experience the joy of hassle-free home improvement. Dream big at subcontractorsunited.com. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jake Owen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fitty and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. The weather's warming up, spring is here, and so is road trip season. And if you're saying, yeah, sure, I would love to load everything up in my car and hit the road and go on a long road trip, but I don't trust my car. It's not dependable. Well, then go see my friends at El Gro Kia. They'll get you into something dependable and super affordable, like a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for $19,988. Yep, at a time when the average new car price is over $48,000, El Grove Kia can get you into a brand new car for less than half of that. And this car's loaded with automatic transmission and eight inch touchscreen with rear camera. It's got advanced driver assistance system, so it's got tech and safety. And again, this brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS can be yours for only $19,988. Only at the number one Sacramento Kia dealer, El Grove Kia and the El Grove Auto Mall and online at elkgrovekia.com. El Grove Kia sale price, $20,738. Kia rebate, $750. Net price, $19,988. One at this price, stock number GK9219. Expires March 31st, 2024. Trying to find out where to catch your favorite team's games? Are you a fan of the Kings, Niners, and the NFL? Well, Sackdown Sports has you covered. Touchdown! Francisco! It's all on his shoulders. Cox rocks. He fires for the win. He's got the triple. Catch all your Kings, Niners, and NFL games all year long on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Your home for Kings basketball for over 25 seasons. Sacktown Sports. Coming to you from the Golden One Center, Kings tonight, Philadelphia 76ers. Trap game for the Kings? Uh, we will see. Before we say bye bye to the elites, so let's go to the phones here. 339 1140, 1 800 920 1140. JR has been hanging on. Thanks, JR, for hanging. You're on with the drive, guys. What's up? Yeah, Keith says, You my guy, Grace, but a cowboy fan? <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty darn funny, James. Hey, same I'm thing with Lakers you. back in the day, you know? He was a Giants uh, fan, though, so, you know. Uh, okay. All right. Well, all good. I just I also laugh because he called you, 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 you're my guy. And I'm like, oh, that's straight flying. You're my guy. <laughs> it must be a Philly thing. And that's what we do. It must be a Philly yeah. thing. Everybody's everybody's <laughs> guy out there in Philly. Eating their cheesesteak. Oh, my God. I'm glad Eat you're back from Canada, there, yeah. buddy. And you're glad about Canada. You made it across the border. I'm glad you're back home. Hey, uh, let's talk they about it. Like, yeah, uh, stop me at the border. Well, that's because you're hanging out with Katie. That's risky business coming across the border with Katie. <laughs> First, I'm going to stop you. She's probably <laughs> trying to smuggle some syrup in or something. Um, uh, let's talk about Keon real quick with his cat-like <laughs> reflexes. Uh, first of all, why you got a you got cat scratches? Reflexes as a song right there, buddy. You know that is teed up for old Whitey to come up with a nice song with Keon saying that it's cat like reflexes. This, the guy right, is in on fire. On, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. He, he, <laughs> Thank you. Thank he, you. He is on. He is so quick. His hands are so active. He's one of those guys, you know, you just love to see as a fan because he causes so much havoc. Even if he doesn't necessarily get the steal himself. He causes a lot of guards to alter their, you know, I think their thoughts on who's coming in and what they're doing. Um, so it, it, it's great that Brown gave him the praise he, he got because he deserves it. Uh, and, and tonight, we need the W tonight. 
We need the W before we meet these damn Mavericks for two games. And, and, and I think we all know what's going on with the Lakers. Come on, the league's fixed. Let's get out of here. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, man, ouch. Commissioner Silver in the building. We'll take that up with him if we encounter right. him uh, tonight. Yeah, he's evening. meeting yeah. with some uh, season ticket holders. Commissioner oh, is he? Silver's downstairs right now. A little Q&A, I think, uh, with season ticket holders. And so to be a fly on the wall in there, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, just got word. Breaking yeah. news. Breaking news. From the Sacramento Kings. Sasha Vizankov is out tonight. Oh, Mr. Vizankov. He is out tonight with the ankle. You know, it's interesting because I talked to him in the, at the Toronto game, and I'm like, Sasha, tomorrow, right? He's like, yeah, tomorrow. Huh. And then he was like, probably. And so still not quite ready. Okay. Still not quite ready. All right. Um, do you think he still has a chance to play any kind of role for this team this year? <sighs> yes. He's going to have to. With the injury to Trey Lyles, you know, which is a couple of weeks injury, and the thing with Trey Lyles, he's going to be reevaluated in a couple of weeks, they said. So next next week, um, we'll probably hear more about Trey Lyles. But I think so. I think if with no Kevin Herter, with no Trey Lyles, you look at our bench, it's pretty thin right now. You know, our bench, if I'm correct, had five points last game, I think it was. Uh, oh, against yeah. Against Orlando? No, with, seven points. With Malik not scoring. Yeah, with of... Malik not scoring. Chris had – look at it. I'll, I'm looking at the box score from the other night. Malik played 22 minutes. Davion, 12. Are you and your box score. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Duarte, 10. Alex Lynn, 8. Like, you need more production yes, from sir. the bench. And right now, they're super thin. So, I do think – uh, an opportunity is there for Sasha when he gets back. Definitely an opportunity. You know, he was a EuroLeague MVP, as was former King Nemanja Bjelica, mm. who just over the weekend decided uh, he's gonna he's gonna uh, retire. I think he played in Turkey last year. Didn't is, play in is the that NBA. Where, yeah. Uh, but two things I think we'll always remember about uh, Nemanja, and you know, this is a guy. Not only did he play for a number of teams, but had a, had a nice career. He won a ring with the Warriors. Warriors, he, yeah, he earned that coming off the bench. He played a lot yep. with them in the postseason. But um, he did a thing with Jay Ross where – have you ever heard it? We don't have it, unfortunately. Oh, we don't have we, it? We don't, uh. we, we'll, we'll, we'll find it at some point. But Jay Ross kept saying his name wrong and thought he was saying it right. Like, Nemanja, 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 Nemanja right? Nemanja. How, I think I'm saying it right. So that was that was funny. That, we'll get that for you. It point. was during media day. It was media day media the day, year that Nemanja day, right? signed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And, you know, Jay Ross is the most uh, – um, a conscientious, good guy, and wanted to make sure he got it right, and he just couldn't quite get it. And anyway, and Nemanja was very, very um, patient. It was, it was funny. And then the other one was when he hit a game winner against the Rockets, mm. which was December 2019. And then as he's doing the post game, and he says, uh, uh, "F it, we deserve this win, guys." Oh snap! <laughs> snap! That's what our girl Katie, right, uh, who was sidelined back then, uh, Katie uh, Christensen back then. No, he, uh, you know, to make the transition, you know, from overseas, I, I thought he had a solid career. You know, he, he did, yeah. And with the Kings, two plus seasons, ten point one points, five point seven rebounds, two point three uh, assists. Yeah, they signed him before, like, see, twenty eighteen. So he's like, uh, yeah. And then you know, I think they ended up trading him to Miami. He had a career. He did some nice things there. It didn't quite work out here. He was never part of a good team here in Sacramento. Yeah. But he's got his ring, and he just decided. Uh, you know, I guess he decided, hey, F it. I got to deserve this, so I'm moving on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. In his best year in Sacramento, 2019-20, uh, when he averaged 11.5 points, 6.4 rebounds, started 67 games. You know, and the thing about him, he was a shooter. He had also. that slingshot. Yeah, three. exactly. You yeah. know, and shot 42% from three that year. And so, uh, no, he'll always be tied to this uh, place right here. Yeah, I know anytime you get a, a former EuroLeague MVP – you know, he's one of the names that comes up. I think Sasha, I still think Sasha could end up being better than Bielitsa here. You think so? Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think he moves better without the ball and he's a good shooter, but I just think he's, uh, I, you know, Bielitsa was more of a stationary catch and shoot gun. I think I, I still, I'd like to think Sasha could be more than move, that. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And they came over at the same age, 27. Oh, yeah. It was Bielitsa uh -huh. when he joined uh, Minnesota. Sasha came over at 27. And, you know, when Sasha was playing toward, you know, before he was actually starting to get into a groove, yes. a little bit of rhythm. And yeah. so you asked me, can he still have, you know, make an impact? And I think so. But 
man, he got to get some time under his belt, some some experience out here. Yeah, and it's tough to keep your wind up when you're uh, coming off the bad ankles, right? Bad ankles, yeah. And so I'm shocked he hasn't played yet. You know, he's been questionable for more right. than a week now. Right. And it's like, dude, all right, let's go. Like, you know, what, what what's the hold up? And I asked Mike Brown about if he had any uh, benchmarks or anything that, you know, he needed to cross still. And he said, no, he's just day to day right now. So hopefully uh, soon. Mm -hmm. Very soon, but not tonight. When we come back, has number 23 save the king season <laughs> from the Golden One Drive Guys, Sackdown Sports. Honey Licious Taste. So a cold won't slow you down. Hey, what's up, Sacramento? It's Kyle Draper. Turn up the cleanliness at your restaurant, healthcare, or industrial business with Alsco Uniforms, the official sponsor of the Sacramento Kings Mop Crew. We've got you covered with crisp uniforms, hygienically clean linens, floor mats, and of course, mops delivered weekly. But that's not all. Alsco Uniforms also offers weekly services for first aid and restroom supplies. Discover why it pays to keep clean with Alsco uniforms. Just go to Alsco.com to learn more. Again, that's ALSCO.com. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. Number one claim based on 2022 total new and Honda certified pre-owned vehicle car sales from American Honda Motor Company's own one report. The sewer system. It's probably the last thing on your mind, and that's okay. Because at the Sacramento Area Sewer District, it's our first priority. As the region's largest sewer utility, we own and maintain thousands of miles of sewer pipe. And our job is to get to your sewer problem before it interrupts your life. So whether you've got a slow drain or a backup, Call us first, day or night. The Sacramento Area Sewer District. It's a dirty job, but we're happy to do it. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda, yeah, your one-stop Honda shop. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Tim Walsh, director of sales for Bridgestone Golf, was excited to talk about the new line of Tour B golf balls. Bridgestone has been making golf balls since 1935, and their philosophy was to serve society with superior quality. All these years later, quality is not in question. While we as players tend to settle on a ball that will increase our distance or one that will enhance feel. The Tour B line of golf balls delivers both distance and feel through their new reactive smart cover and mid-layer. PGA Tour player Jason Day assisted on the development of Mindset, which is a visual cue on the golf ball to remind you of a three-step process. First is to identify your target, then visualize the shot path, and then focus on the dot, which helps to clear your mind and execute the shot you visualized. Mindset is available on the full line of Bridgestone Tour B golf balls. To learn more, visit BridgestoneGolf.com. That's your golf to go. I'm Frank LaRosa. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Francisco! Sacktown Sports. They do not know what Sacktown brings. When on the low, that's a Sacktown thing. Talking about us, it's a bounce. The okay. only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. Home of the Kings who take on the Sixers tonight. And yes, home of the 49ers. By the way, Drapes, before we yeah. get back to uh, the Kings tonight, what did you think of the NFL today? Announcing that um, they want to uh, they want to penalize hip drop tackles. Yeah. Uh, NFL announcing today. Pardon me. Uh, the proposal was approved in a vote of team owners. Rule change calls for a 15 yard penalty during games for hip drop tackles. Players could also be fined by the league. 
Any thoughts on that? No, it's um, I get it. I understand it. It's sort of similar to the horse collar tackle uh, years ago. Um, you know, it, it, it's a play that we've seen players over the years get injured and hurt with. With that being said, it's hard being a defender right now in the NFL. Like, no question. It's, you, you, you can't go low on quarterbacks. You can't, like, understanding the rules and you can't tackle like this and, like, you know, and so I think it's another advantage for the offense and 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 guys like CMC, Saquon, like, you know, the receivers. It's going to be tough to bring these guys down. I think it's going to be a big problem yeah. Uh, yes. because it's so much harder to define than, like you say, horse collar. Well, how do we know if it's a horse collar? Did you grab the guy right. by the back yeah. of the jersey? You can't do that. Uh, hip drop tackles, that's when a defensive player grabs a ball carrier and then drags them down while uh, unweighting themselves by dropping their hips and That's it results tough. in a lot of injuries. Yeah. And then you see why do guys do it? Because it's a dirty play? No, because it's a way to You're trying to someone bring down. Them down. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like, how do you tackle a guy? You know, let's say you're tracking them from behind. You know, you grab them and you drop to the ground. You right. know, like right. now you can't do that or you'll get penalized. And so, no, it's, it's going to make, uh, you know, tackling that much more difficult. In the yeah. NFL. This type of uh, tackle, according to the NFL, results in 20 to 25 times more injuries than other kinds of tackles. So I understand it. But especially if you have, you know, a big fullback in the secondary and you have maybe a smaller defensive back and he's yeah. trying to bring that guy down. When right. The guy's got a full yeah. head of steam. You know, it's like, what, what am supposed I supposed to, to do? do? Yeah. I'll just bounce off him. Just bounce and let him go. You know, it's uh, and so look for uh, offenses to, to points and all that to be up. Fantasy numbers, yards gained, all that to be up. Yeah, if it makes the game safer, okay. But I, I, I just think, and you know, the NFL now, what it comes down to is, well, now they have to define in the rules what is a hip drop. Tackle, yeah, which is going to get back to the days of, you know, what is a catch? Well, what we define a catch. A catch. <laughs> this was like, oh, dude, I, I still don't know what a catch is to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. Sometimes. Now you must be speaking of the 49ers, You must be pretty happy because it looks like the 49ers say they're not going to trade Ayuk and they love Ayuk, but. Maybe we're not sure how Ayuk feels about the 49ers. All right. I, I, and why do you think that is? Like, I thought everything was all, you know, peace and harmony and, you know, had a great season, uh, career season. And, you know, Ayuk's my guy. You know, I'm a, that's the one guy on the Niners, like, I'm a big fan of. And I think, you know, they have to either A, restructure his deal. That's it. Or B, and, and, you know, the Niners said they'd be happy with, you know, him picking up his option and him playing under his – like, if that happens – Bye-bye. That's, yeah, that's curtains after that. Okay, you want it like that? He's gone. Yeah. He's going to be gone. My guess would be it's something on the lines of Ayuk saying, you love me? That's great. You can say how much you love me. Great. Show me. Show me the Show money. Show me the money. <laughs> yes. And then everything will be fine. We went through this with Debo, something similar with yeah. Bosa. It happens, and guys draw lines like, no, I want this much. I'm worth this yeah. much. And then the 49ers give them that, and then onward we go. This was interesting. I just saw this uh, on Twitter from a guy named Joe Pompliano, and if you don't know who that is, welcome to who he is. He's a, he's a sports investor guy or an investment guy, has a ton of followers. Yeah. Here's what he uh, said on Twitter. To recap the last week in sports, NBA integrates live betting odds into its broadcast. Mm -hmm. Shohei Otani accuses interpreter of selling uh, betting $4.5 million on sports. Cavs coach J.B. Bickerstaff says his family has been threatened by sports bettors. Wow. Tyrese Halliburton says he feels like a prop. John Tay Porter being investigated by the NBA for irregularities on prop bets. Yep. It's been yeah, that kind of week. That's about right. Yep. And, you know, it's as Compio said, betting will ruin uh, sports. Gambling will ruin sports. It's it's a slippery slope because. Not only, you know, the John Tay Porter situation that we talked about uh, earlier, not only the, what happens in between the lines, but, you know, like, who was it? J.B. Bickerstaff, you said? Uh, yeah, yeah. Getting threatened. Like, people. You, you heard know, that story, right? I didn't yeah. I didn't hear that one. Oh, That's he a, basically said that uh, some betters found out his number and they called his house and they, I, you know, I don't know what they right. were wanting, but they said they were threatening. Yes. His and, family. And so, and, you know, people lose this money. They get desperate and everything. And. It's just, it, it's too much of a slippery slope. You know, it's interesting. I was, you know, you, you look at college sports right now with the NIL, and it's sort of like the wild, wild west now, the transfer portal. And so now some people are saying, 
maybe we should dial it back a little bit, you know? But it's kind of hard, like you said. Like, the cat's out the bag. How do you stuff it back in? It's like getting the toothpaste toothpaste Yeah, Yeah. how do you do that? And so I think we may have moved too quickly with this gambling thing in in, in this country. Yeah, it's uh, – it's. I'm not a fan of it, you know. I miss the old days of going to Vegas, sitting in the sports books, you know. It's too much of an ease. And, you know, like you said earlier, the NBA now through the app, I believe. Yeah, I've can, forgotten about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the NBA, you well, know. I think it's while you're watching while you're league watching pass. The league pass. Yeah. Yes, you can actually, you know, bet on the games. It's, it's ridiculous to me. Yeah. yeah. And who's to say, not that this would happen, but if you're a player out there, you got a boy in the stands, there's a – he gets word to you at halftime. Hey, man, I just put, you know, 100,000, whatever. It, there's too much influence now that's going to be over these players and coaches now. It almost seems inevitable. Right. Now, as far as the Otani stuff goes, who knows? Otani spoke today, as we discussed. And to me, I don't think we have any other choice right now but to take what he says at face value. If something else comes out that uh, indicates that he's he's not telling the truth, fine. But basically, he said today, I didn't know my guy was doing this. I've never bet. I didn't pay the bookie. I haven't been betting on baseball. Uh, it sounds like he honestly didn't know what was going on. And you can, you yeah. can be, you know, you can be skeptical, a lot coin, but though. yeah, but yeah. that's a, a, that's a lot of coin. And, and, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, if he didn't bet on baseball, I'm fine with it. You know, it's, the illegal bookmaker. Then you open up the gray area. Did he, you know, the speculation and everything like that. But, you know, you mentioned it earlier and you didn't say it by name, but, you know, a certain number 23, yeah. you know, went away for a little bit and focused on, quote, baseball. Right. You know, this is the biggest star in Major League Baseball we're talking about, Shohei Otani. This is a guy that they're putting in the, in the same category as Babe Ruth. And this would be a major scandal, I think, for Major League Baseball in terms of, A, not only if he did better or not, didn't bet on baseball, but B, just the loss of your star. But like he's the face of the league right now. You take him out. What do you have if you're baseball? Don't you think a lot of people would look at it this way? Oh, well, of course, baseball wants to protect him. So if they say he didn't do anything wrong, they're clearly protecting him. He clearly did do something wrong. Right. I mean, for some people, there's no way baseball can win on this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, and if he did do something wrong, maybe it's a slap on the wrist, though. Right. You know, Yeah. It, you know, whereas Pete Rose is still ser- serving a lifetime ban, maybe Shohei, it's 100 games. or I, I don't know what it would be, but I think baseball needs this guy right now. Mm-hmm. I do think getting back to the larger issues that we were just talking about betting and, you know, you, if pro sports is going to have any chance of holding this off, yeah. this, this influence of, of betting to the point where we, it loses all credibility. They have to have that line. Don't they have, you bet on the games you're out. Yeah. That's it. Right. I know you're, you're oh, pro sports. but it, you have to have it. Yeah. If you bet on the games, you're out. Bet on your the league you're playing. Like, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, you, you have we to. Can't, you cannot right. do that. Right. And, and because that erodes public trust. You yeah. Know? And then the whole gambling thing is like, it goes it, it goes down the toilet. Like, if I know players or coaches are influencing, you know, uh, betting, you know, for their purposes, why would I bet then? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, it's a losing proposition for me. And so, no, you're right, man. It, it, it has to be a zero tolerance policy. And somebody's going to get clipped. Uh-huh. Somebody's going to get clipped because it's too much of a part of our society right now. That said, do you know what the line is for tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I, have no <laughs> I don't, I don't I have know. No idea. Uh, <laughs> but when we come back, we'll wrap things up here from the Golden One, get you ready for game night, and we'll look at uh, the Kings number 23. Can All you right. make the case that Keon Ellis is in the process of saving the Kings season? Next, Drive Guys, Sackdown Sports. The Sacramento Kings five-game homestand begins tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. The push for the postseason is here, and every game is critical. Dribble handoff to Malik. Can he do it again? Pocket pass back to Sabonis. The two-hand hammer. That could be a dagger. It's 115-107. Malik Monk with the assist pass for Demata Sabonis. Listen to all the thrilling moments beginning tonight at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. 
Dr. Ken Halachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are gonna function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. The Tribe Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Satown Sports. What are you doing tomorrow, Drapes, for the show? How are you getting ready for the show tomorrow? I don't know, man, because I don't have any TV duty, so I may come out, come dressed as uh, Total King's gear tomorrow, purple from head to toe. I might do that because we got that live show tomorrow. Yes, hope you can join us tomorrow one way or the other. We'd love for you to come by Beach of Delhi, right by the arena. That's where we're doing the show uh, tomorrow. Biggest um, regular season game this year, right? This is oh, yeah, this oh, is it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, uh, you know, try not to look past tonight's foe. But uh, tomorrow, not only is it a huge game, but it's, of course, uh, a great chance for us uh, tomorrow as Kings fans to show the basketball nation watching on TNT yeah. uh, that they just need to pay attention to what's going on when it comes to Domas and the numbers he's putting up. They're sensational. Wake up. They Watch the game. <laughs> The second best center in the league right now because Embiid's out, out, you know, because of the injury. It's Jokic, and then it's our guy, DeMontis Sabonis. And I, I think tomorrow, think about this. If this double-double streak continues, that's 54. Then tomorrow, if it continues, would be 55, tying the great Jerry Lucas mm. over the two-year span. And For the so, franchise. Franchise, right. exactly. And so that that's something uh, – What's up, kids? You got Jay. I, I tell you what, man. Don't be creeping up on me like that. What's up, young fella? How you doing, man? How you doing, Kyle? You help you working with that guy? This guy? Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Job shadow over here. But nice. <laughs> no, uh, you know, the, the country will get to see what we see night in and night out. And you know, it, it, this is a huge opportunity. And not only that. You got tomorrow on TNT, mm -hmm. the league announced what we had told everybody Friday. The game against the Knicks is going to be on TNT also. That's Sacramento at New York. Mind you, Whitey, nice. that's a 7 o'clock start on the East Coast. So everybody will be up, awake, able to see uh, DeMontis Sabonis put in that work. Well, if you have any chance in mind for tomorrow, uh, we'd appreciate you sharing them with us because we want to get everybody on the, as close to the same page as we can get everybody in the building. Grapes had a great idea uh, for tomorrow. Coaches got it wrong. Is Coaches got it wrong. That's our yeah. chant. Yeah. I wish we had T-shirts or signs yeah. or something. Like, Coaches got it wrong. Coaches got it wrong. Yeah, yeah. I can see 17,000 plus chanting that. And they should because they did get it wrong. And, and that's what's so frustrating. Our guy Domas, man, you know, he has just... The thing about him, Whitey, we got the numbers, but it's the effort. It's the grit. It's determination. You could feel him when he plays, and I think that's something we recognize here in Sacramento, but it's time for the league-wide to see it. It certainly is time for the league to just take notice of yeah. what incredible, because I still think nationally, you know, if you're a fan, maybe a little more casual fan, and you read the ringer and things, you probably get this idea that, Okay, I guess this guy's okay, but he's just having a nice year or whatever, right. you know, because you read your buddy Kevin O'Connor or whatever. <laughs> Hello. He's uh, you know, it's the same thing we said about didn't we say the same thing about Keon Ellis? He's relentless. That's a domo. Yes. And that's the way the Kings need to be as a team, because they're not the most overly talented team. 
They're a good team. Don't right. get me wrong. Right. They're not a bunch of scrubs, but they have to embrace that relentlessness at both ends of the floor to be as good as they can be. And it's great to have Domas setting the tone there. Monk has right. done that a lot. And uh, De'Aaron Fox. And now you've got Keon Ellis, who maybe is in the process of saving their season. Yes. And, and you know, the Kings, like you said, they can't just show up and expect to win on talent. And that's why Keon Ellis has made such a big difference in this team. This is a guy that, you know, is a two-way player, worked his way up, was not heavily recruited coming out of high school, went to a JUCO, tra- like he got it out of the mud. And I think that's the, what the Kings need. It's like, you know, they could, the Warriors in their prime, they could show it when you got KD and everything Sorry, who, like that. Who'd you say? What uh, team? The Warriors. I know they. <laughs> In oh, okay. Rear, I remember that. They're in our rear view mirror. I understand yeah, that. But I gotcha. they back in the day could just show up and beat teams on talent. We got to show up and, and really grind. You got Domas. And now you got Keon Ellis, too, man, mm-hmm. that brings it night in and night out. Yeah, it's not just enough. And I think Davion said this after the team meeting. It's not just enough to play hard. The Kings have to play harder than the other teams yes. every night. Right. And and, have their best chance to win. That's just the reality. And and let's look at the teams they lose to, usually. It's teams that play harder than them. I'm going to throw out the Washington game, the Charlotte, Detroit, but the Pelicans, those kind of – the Houston Rockets, Mm -hmm. the the Knicks, those are teams that grind it out every single possession, and those are the teams that cause us trouble. It's because they're playing harder than us. And so tonight, the Sixers team banged up. The Kings should still act like they're the hungry ones, you know. They're the ones being hunted and and, and have to act like that tonight. In my opinion, a lot of times when the Kings have lost some of these games that fans have expected them to win, I think the whole mental aspect is, I think it's I think it's overstated. Oh, they should know by now this is a big game. I, I don't think that's the issue. But I do think tonight is a real challenge for them. The fact that you've got two massive games coming up, right. one of them tomorrow, but okay, you got to take care of your business tonight. You, you do. And I wonder, though, Whitey, as we talk about this, what as a player can be done? Like certain nights, you just don't have it. But in some nights, and we've talked about this before, you got to manufacture that energy, that excitement. So the second night of a back to back in Washington, no reason to really get up for that game, but do like the great Michael Jordan used to do whether it was somebody in the stands mm-hmm. an article something whatever it takes to get you motivated on that given night because and i understand it's a long season a long schedule 82 games but certain times some games you're not going to have it but that doesn't excuse you from actually going out there and perform and getting the win that's what the great teams do i think when the kings are stuck when they're having those games where it's not going their way one of the things they really have to try to emphasize is stops and getting out and running. Yeah. Because they, st- especially with Deer and Fox. And they are still, and I got to ask Mike Brown about this. No one talks about this. They are still number one in the NBA in defensive rebounding percentage. Right. That's big. So that means the shot goes up. They're going to get their fair share, and most of it's Domas of the rebounds. Yes. And then they have the ability to get out and run and get in transition. And that should make everything easier for them. And they should be a team that's capable of doing that better than most. Yes. And, you know, and that's the thing too. It, it starts on that end, right? Yeah. Like good offense doesn't lead to it shouldn't lead to great defense. Great defense should lead to great offense, you know. And and so I, I think we're starting to see that more and more uh, with the Sacramento Kings team. And you know, it's something the guys have talked about in recent weeks. You know, you see it turn up defensively, and then they get out and run to your point and, and get easy buckets. I'd like to see more of it, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see more of it. RJ, can you take care of that for me, big dog? All right. I got my, my big grocery bag there, dude. I had like four pa- bags of popcorn or boxes. I didn't have lunch he's a, today. He's man. an engineer. He's not your garbage, man. Who brings him the food, though? Who hooks him oh, up yeah, with that's the food? True. Uh, that's uh, all I ask. S- S- uh, Sabrina? Serena. S- Selena. Selena. <laughs> Selena does. Sorry. But yeah. I'm saying I take care of him every time. Yes, you I do. ask him one that's time true. to throw something that's away true. from me. You're you on do, my you, case. You do do a good job of taking care of him. Make Had sure you locked well in, too, fed. but you, you usually pass on it. So. Yeah, I eat right after we finish up here. Okay. Right after we finish up here. So do you think the Kings will be feasting on Philly tonight? I 
No. Maybe because I want to think they right. Will. I that's think the they thing. will. <laughs> right. I want to say yes because that's that's wishful thinking. Me being hopeful that the guys will respond. But you know, last game of a road trip for the Sixers, back to back, coming off a great win. It's only natural, I think, for the Philly team, this Philly team, to let its guard down a little bit. You know, we went into LA, we accomplished something, and you know, we had Keith Pompey on last hour, and he felt like tonight's game will be more more of a challenge uh, for the Sixers than yesterday's Clippers game, which I, I thought was shocking. But, you know, we know all the numbers, Whitey, 0-10 uh, against the Sixers yeah, over the last incredible. 10. Joel Embiid out. They still, you know, mopped the floor with us uh, back in January when we were there. And so you you got to think the coaching staff and the players know this. So I'm hoping for an inspired start tonight. Here's what else is going on in the Western Conference tonight. Uh, the Clippers are hosting the Pacers. Pacers still steaming after that loss to the Lakers, in which Rick Carlisle suggested perhaps the whistles weren't um, going the Pacers' way as much as they should have. We also have the Mavericks tonight are in action against the Utah Jazz. Oh, That's okay. Dallas at uh, at Utah. See, so yeah. they got some easy matchups, though. Phoenix, you, uh, Dallas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like this is what the toughest of the, of the uh, matchups tonight. Yes, and we have the Suns are trailing currently early first quarter. They're down sixteen to thirteen. They're taking on the Spurs in San Antonio. Right. You figure the Suns probably win that game. Probably right? win that yeah. game, and so yeah, I, I think you know. So big game tonight. Big game tonight. Big game tonight. You know, and, and I've said it, and I'll say it again. You know, here in our last couple of minutes, the Kings still control their own destiny. Thank you to Adam Silver for this schedule. Like if the Phoenix, uh, you know, series with them was already settled and we had lost the season series, like the Kings can still finish out strong and, and get that six seed and maybe outside chance at a five seed. How about this? How about the idea of the Kings finishing so strong that they actually have some momentum that yes. they take into the postseason? Right. I hadn't even considered that. I got to be honest. <laughs> You're just like, it's just, just been so, it. right. yeah, <laughs> Ooh, up and down and but, up and down. Yes, but there's a chance, you know, with 12 games left. And, and I don't know what that point is. Is it the last five where you get momentum, the last 10? You know, because you look at the schedule, Whitey, and the way things are jumbled up, every game from here on out is going to matter. You know, last year they lost three out of their last four, I think it was. It was because they had the third seed pretty much wrapped up. This year, you're going to have to probably beat Portland on the last night yeah. of the season. And so to your point about that momentum, you know, it, it's starting right now. Every game is like a playoff game for the Kings right now. One thing that I don't think the Kings have gotten enough credit for uh, in terms of their win over Orlando, as you probably know, they only turned the ball over seven yes. times. Yeah. They played with a lot of discipline. Right. And speaking of great discipline, I want to uh, shout out the high flyer. You talk about discipline. I don't know how long he's been sitting Dude. there. He didn't come over. He sat back. He's eating. He didn't come in. And and I didn't even know how long he's been there. Great discipline. Great Dude, discipline by I've, the high flyer. I've been tonight. looking for you all like the last half hour. I'm like, where's the high flyer at? All of a sudden, he don't want to come up and debo us. Yo, let me ask we you. Only this, have like a we minute. got like one minute. So yeah, that's like yeah. half just, an answer for you. I just said you've shown great discipline tonight, Henry, by just hanging back. Bro, I was sitting there waiting. That's all. Dude, <laughs> let me ask you this as you chew on your cookie real <laughs> quick. Is that my boy Doug West down there? Is that yeah. oh, I didn't know Doug Doug West was my guy. Villain over stud, played for the Timberwolves back in the day. I'm a Doug West guy, bro. Man, let me tell you, me and Doug West used to guard each other. We play, I mean, we, buckets, when we right? come on now, we used to go at each other because our, game, great defenders too. Our, our games were very similar. All right. We were just talking about that. I was like, Doug, I said, can you imagine playing in today's game with our first step and our explosion to the right? Ooh, Doug West. He was like, ooh, we, it'll be something <laughs> special. Doug's a great guy, man. Win tonight, Henry. Win tonight, you right? feeling good about this one? I'm hoping so, man. I mean, our squad, dude, is so up and down and so unpredictable that, you know, you, you can't look at a game and just say, yeah. Totally, yes. You know, we need this one, and we need both of those with Dallas. Yes. I mean, once again, this basketball team needs some separation, oh. fellas. I'm tired of just watching the scoreboard. Yeah. That separation is something that's desperately needed. All right. Uh, watch uh, Drapes tonight, uh, pre and post. Pre and post right? tonight, yeah. big fella. Yeah. Yes, sir. And stick okay. around for the high flyer because game night is next right here on Sackdown Sports.